Welcome to the uh, Scarborough Zoning Board meeting of uh, July 13, 2016. Shall please stand with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Hebert? Here. Uh, Mr. Crockett? Here. Mr. Stark? Here. Mr. Maroon? Here. Uh, Mr. Blaze? Here. Ms. Shoup? Here. And Mr. Richards? Very good. <clears throat> uh, all members here. Any questions? Do I have a motion for the minutes of? To make. Hmm. Motion to Jimmy. approve as presented. Second. Second. No, okay. It's unanimous. You can, that's unanimous. Okay, let's keep right into what we've got. I'm sorry for a little of the confusion, but I spent a little bit of time before we came in. And I needed to get my handle on some information. Uh, so the first appeal is. My name is Bill Soule, uh, owner of Atop Chimney. Uh, address is uh, uh, 219 Cousins Road in Buxton. Uh, the address we're dealing with is uh, 362 Payne Road. Do me a favor and just speak up a little bit for two reasons. Yep. Me and the TV, but probably only me. Um, okay, did you get that information? So what would you like to accomplish with your role? Uh, Steve Blaze, Blaze Civil Engineers, right down the road here, um, next to Walgreens. Um, so basically what we have here is um, uh, Bill Soul, Bill and Wendy Soul of uh, Atop Chimney <coughs> would like to move their businesses, uh, move their operation to uh, Scarborough. Um, they're really excited to move into town. Um, the site is right between um, A-plus party rental and uh, Ron Fence, right on Payne Road, 362 Payne Road. Currently used uh, as a residential, well, not currently used. It's it's now being turned into uh, a business use, but it was a residential use up until what we're doing now. Um, back as far as we could see on Google Earth, uh, it was a farm. There was a barn uh, towards the back, um, residence towards the front, um, and uh, the barn hasn't been used for, it hasn't been farmed for, for a while, obviously, um, by looking at the land. So we're here for, for uh, one reason, it's for outdoor storage. Um, storing any vehicle for over 48 hours in the town of Scarborough requires a special exception, and that's why we're here. We're also going to have some temporary storage um, of materials. Uh, Bill gets uh, shipments of liners to put in chimneys and brick. Um, so you'll see that on the plan. We tucked it away behind the structure. Um, to buffer it from the views of the road. Um, and the parking is to the left as you pull into the site. Site plan, uh, standards require four spaces um, for this site. The uh, building's just under 1,000 square feet. The site is about an acre. Um, and uh, so that's what we're looking to do. Uh, from residential to a uh, office use. residence that was there was not conforming. The office uh, is actually really more considered a retail service in our standards. Um, it's, con it's an allowed use in the B3 zone, and as they stated, it's really the outdoor storage that requires the special exception in the B3. So in essence, we're trading one special exception for another. Is that a fair way of looking at it? Um, no, no. The residence was non-conforming. So 
outdoor storage is, so the, the retail service, the business he's looking to establish is permitted in the zone. Okay. Outdoor storage is, as you know in our ordinance, we have permitted uses and then special exception uses. So the outdoor storage is considered a special exception use and that's, those are the standards that the board will be applying is essentially, you know, does, does the use sort of, is it compatible in general terms with the, with the neighborhood? So it's a difference here. between outside, sto uncovered outside storage and covered outside storage. Correct. If, if he weren't to have any outdoor storage, and we should note that the way our ordinance reads is that outdoor storage is the keeping of commercial uh, of vehicles in one place for more than 24 hours. So um, as the, the narrative, uh, I think, describes in here, he has two um, business trucks, vans, um, that will go to your house typically and have a chimney sweep come or what have you, um, <coughs> that will be parked there over the weekend. So the keeping of those commercial vehicles is considered accessory outdoor storage, which requires that special exception. Isn't there a rule, I don't know from my back memory, you can probably help me, is there a rule that says you can have up to two vehicles? There is, there is, but it, and I can, it's in our performance standards, and it's limited to are the um, R2, R3, and R4. It's really about those um, residential it's just not neighborhoods. <laughs> it's not to do with the current ones. And yeah, that's sort of an antiquated language that actually, as we've been talking in, in our department, you know, it's probably time to sort of dust that off and sort of see what makes sense maybe to permit some, you know, um, some businesses to have vehicles that you know, are used during the week but stay there. Anything you want to add to this? Not this time. Okay. Happy to answer questions as we go as needed. So why don't we do this? Um, let's go <coughs> through the criteria. And let's start with second. And if you like, we'll have you stand up. Or you can sit right there. Don't stand up. And Thanks. Uh, I'll get to that page here in a section. We'll read in the uh, request, and then you can answer accordingly, okay? Sure. <coughs> so the proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhelpful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or so we're asking for uh, parking two vehicles. Um, there are we do require four spaces for for the to meet the ordinance of the site plan that will will be at Monday's meeting for that. Um, we don't see any unreasonable uh, pollution that would come from or uh, any waste that would come from the vehicles and the uh, material storage uh, bricks and liners are pretty uh, inert. I'll say. Um, Okay. Is, there a shed, is there a building being built in the back? Uh, <coughs> negative. There is a building in the back now. It's a it's a kind of an older barn, and uh, Bill's just really trying to get in, get his business there right now in the front. We might come back at some point, and and see about the back. But for right now, we're just focusing on uh, making the front structure usable for office. We're not you're not changing anything, not really doing anything different. Just paint, cleaning, and so no new structures. Those use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic condition and added to the ex existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Yeah, so uh, Payne Road sees, sees a lot of traffic, as, as, as we all know. Um, uh, the neighborhood across the street, there isn't uh, any development directly across the street. Um, to the, if you're looking at the site to the left or the south is uh, Ron Fence Company. You know, they certainly see the same kind of use or, or more. An A plus party rental. Um, uh, I see their box trucks on the road, anyways. I imagine uh, they go in and out of there a bit. Um, so I feel it's a pretty compa compatible use. I don't think there's any unreasonable safety uh, concerns there. Sight distance is also uh, good. Sight distance on Payne Road. Are the proposed uses will not create unsafe vehicular or 
proposed use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Similar answer to the uh, one before, the, very similar to, and you know. That's fine. The, yeah. the, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on the water supplies. You have to build out any road parking there. We just improve the gravel a little bit. Is, is all we're going to do. Um, so no real, we're not digging anything up, so to speak. <clears throat> the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Uh, at this time, we're not proposing any changes to structures other than uh, beautification. And that's not, that's on, that's on the shoreline, is it? It's not on the shoreline. No. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, do you own the property now or are you on the contract? No. And when did you purchase the fish recently? Uh, yes, previously. Uh, yeah. Do you have the technical financial? We, if we dump all kinds of stuff on you, can you support us? <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the questions that's on here that says you have the technical financial ability. Who knows what that means? So I'm just saying that just so you know that it's out there, we can think something. There. Yeah, uh, Bill's planning is to self perform the work. Um, so, what are those questions that you read? You go, yeah. oh, why is that here? <laughs> so, okay. Want to open up the board for questions? There's a, the final one. Yeah, later on. Oh, did I miss one? I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, proposed use will be uh, compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to generation of noise and hours of operation. Uh, we're not proposing any hours beyond what's already existing in the neighborhood. And the vehicles are going to be parked where those new spots are, or are they going to be parked in back? Uh, right, where those new spots are on the and, left. And the, the gravel is going to be next to the barn, and then there's Correct. going to be a dumpster after that. Is that right? Is that a dumpster? So as you're going in, you can park to the left, yeah. and you go in a little more storage on the right between the existing structures. And then there's a, there's a bit of a access to the barn that was kind of historically there. So when I, when I looked at the pictures, it, I, I didn't see any storage after the house. I only saw the... Correct. Yeah, and the, so the storage is being added between the structures. We just thought it would be a good place to add it so the structure can hide the views from Payne Road. My, my just general question on that is, Bose gravel storage pad is one conversation. I can measure that out pretty easily. Ten by ten, and the dumpster pad looks something about eight by eight. Uh, is that all we're talking about for storage? Or are we talking about pipes over here? No, that's all we're talking about. So the rest is just going to be gravel or, or grass. I think Correct. There were, uh, what was the chimney tile? Uh, excuse me. Materials. Materials. Yeah, tiles and um, and liners. They would. And where are they going to be stored? In that little um, uh, right, right here. It'll, it'll fit and in there the with the gravel. gravel. It's also, I think, I think that uh, this uh, the dumpster pad is ten by ten. We usually draw on that size, so that's a little bit bigger than ten by ten. Okay. And really, it'll be anything that stays for a long term will, will be stored in a little section of the barn. To keep it out of the weather. And so, I'm, I'm trying to get a handle on here is is six months from now we've got uh, pipes and uh, a couple of old engines and who knows what. What I see here is nothing else but those two areas and the rest is going to be open and clear. Correct. And the reason you can't put the gravel inside the barn is it just because it's not enough wide enough door to get the, the bed up or whatever? It's more a function, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, of the delivery method. You know, the truck comes, and they're looking to get it off, not necessarily in the building. And, you know, maybe Bill's not there when they deliver, and he says, leave it in the storage area. And is that, is that what, you, what, you, what you, how many yards is that going to typically be? As far as storage goes, it's, it's not, very, not very big at all. Like, it would fit in the back of a pickup truck. Well, we have it. Okay, so you're not, talking, you're not talking about a dump truck? No. I was thinking dump truck. Oh, no, no. It's not loose material. It's uh, the bricks come on pallets, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Very seldomly is it more than 100 bricks. This may be the problem. I may be misunderstanding it. 
exposed gravel storage pad. I took that literally. Does that mean it's a gravel pad that's going to have storage on it? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. That helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you going to do that? <laughs> what, are you, what are you using the gravel for? <laughs> okay, thank you for the clarification. He builds roads on the side. No, just kidding. Uh, other board members' questions. Sorry they jumped in there. Um, you said uh, proposed beautification. Does that mean you're actually going to fix up that building to make it eye appealing? Uh, the, the building out front or the, the back? Uh, up front. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's in the process of doing it right now. Okay, I'm yeah. not real concerned with the one in the back, but the front. Yeah, like the, the one up front has been being worked on as we speak. And what, what's being included on that? As far as fixing it up? Yeah. Um, we've gone through, and so far we've gone through the front of the, uh, three sides of the building. We've uh, repaired any wood that's been <coughs> wooden batten siding. We've painted three sides of it so far. We've, we've you know, painted the deck, placed a few uh, minor boards on the deck, and we've, it's been painted and, and painted the doors and stuff like that. It looks quite a bit different. I'm assuming this picture is not after the painting. Correct. Right. right. <laughs> Have you had a chance to start here at all? It's I actually did take a chance to uh, drive by today. Um, yeah, I was surprised at how different the building looks. <laughs> Would you compare it to what is there currently, like with Ron Forest fence and the party store? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's dressed up as well as um, it's got a fresh coat of paint on it, and it definitely looks. Um, so with the look expression, the pig thing. <laughs> is that so it's about as good yeah. from a practical point of view? With, without doing something substantial to the building, I think he's done a nice job with what's out there. Okay. Any yep. expectations that you would want beyond that? Well, that would be a question. So I, I, when you asked me before, I should have mentioned this item will wind up going before the planning board for a full site plan review because it's a conversion of a residential use to a commercial use. That triggers full site plan review. Um, so I, I should have mentioned that at the outset. For that, so the planning board will ultimately decide that. But and that also I, does that also include the safety and whether or not this meets the. Yep. Code? So so they'll take a look at traffic type issues, um, you know, more more closely. Um, uh, typically, um, you know, outdoor storage areas, dumpster pads are looked to be enclosed, so they might ask for some fencing around there. Might be a, a question that could be asked. Um, so they'll sort of look at those details. But yes, um, to your question, you know, certainly the fire department. Uh, as part of the application to the planning board, fire department, public works, SEDCO, sanitary, planning, codes, all the departments get a bite at the apple. We can sort of all get together, discuss the issues. But the planning board is not looking to us to make any decision for them to go forward, right? All, what, what the applicant is before you for is for the outdoor storage. The planning board can't approve outdoor storage. That's okay. so. Once, you, once, once, and if you say the outdoor storage is acceptable, and the parameters of how big it can be and the location, then the board will do the rest that they typically do with the and site plan. The four things we're dealing with is two vehicles, a dump pad, and a and the, the gravel area, the material storage. That's all. We That's do. it. Yeah. Um, I just like to make a comment. When that wasn't considered. Where the two, the two parking spaces come. 4882. Why don't you need three? Do you expect your business to grow? Um, you know, now's the time to, <laughs> to think about that. Well, what, what, I, I, uh, what I do is I take my vehicle home, and the two vehicles that um, my, my employees use are staying overnight. That, that's, a, that's a point that me and Steve had talked about, and I don't anticipate it happening anytime within the next three years probably. What he's getting at is he doesn't want to have to, you have to make, you know, you're, he's trying to be a good guy. He doesn't want you to have to come back. I'm I'm so back. See. if you think you could use three, now's the time to ask for three, because if, if two, two gets declined, three is yeah. going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. I see. <laughs> so. does, it, um, d does it matter to the board if we were, there's four parking spaces required by the site plan approval. It would be simplest to go four, oh, no. but, but Three would be fine. Two works. I, I mean, it, th there's a chance in the future if his business grows, we might be back in front of the planning board again, and let's let's make the site even better. Um, so, other board members, is there um, are, are the temporary uh, vehicle shelters going to remain there? No. Okay, those are coming out. So. Do you anticipate any walk-in customers? No. Okay. Because. 
we ran into that last month with the outdoor structures not considered outdoor storage or something like that, like that I believe. Right, so if, if, if they were leaving them, they wouldn't have to do it. Right, right. If, if everything could go in that barn, wouldn't be here. It'd be just going to the planning board. Um, that was a discussion that we had early on. So <coughs> someone said, well, you know, if you want this stuff, you're going to have to do this two-step process. So I'm sure you can't use that barn. And I think he's looked at it obviously pretty closely. Well, I'm not even saying the barn. I'm saying we, we ran into it last month with the pop-up tents being considered, not being considered out the outdoor storage. I believe, at an appeal last month, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. No. Chairman, but if, no. but if they're removing those, they're kind of defeating their own purpose because then they have to ask for it. See what I'm saying? The, the shelters or the pop-up tents, right. last month I thought those weren't considered as outdoor, outdoor storage or something. Technically, within. they need, you're right. So if, by removing them, they're actually asking for storage they already have. That's correct. Okay. <laughs> where are those located currently? Right on the driveway, right where we're going to be parking. That doesn't. The, the, the first doesn't two parking spaces. Parking. But you, you don't want them there. Right. I, don't, I don't want them. Okay. Because okay. that's just, question. It's yeah, just something that doesn't need to come before us because right. Right. it's not considered storage outdoors. This is why you're on the sport. That was a. Okay, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep you in on the character of the neighborhood. Do you want to have that right. on your front lawn? Oh, I, I understand. Um, what about the what about the uh, the container out back? I was reading the section on uh, accessory containers. <coughs> Is that staying or leaving? Because that shouldn't be there. It, it will definitely eventually leave. As of right now, I haven't even gotten that far to be honest with you. It's, there's some stuff in there that I'm still going to be. I've, I've taken quite a bit of stuff yeah, to the top. Right. Yeah. Um, so it, it it will eventually leave. Yes. So. You may have to have a time frame. Six months, three months, two years. A year, by, by this time next next year, I think. I mean, I got it's on the list. It's just that'll be part down of on the list. Yeah. That'll be yeah. planning board too. So okay. we, we'll leave it alone. We might want to make a comment on you know, and let's figure out what we do. Other questions from board members? The only thing I would think of is the suggestion that was made that the planning board may may ask us to do like a fence or something around there. I don't think that's necessarily a bad idea to have an area where it's. Yeah, so the planning board would take a look at that. It's one of their, uh, when they go through a site plan review ordinance, one of the elements is outdoor storage and that standard specifically calls for dumpsters and outdoor storage areas to be fenced. Um, so I'm suggesting that's something the planning board would be looking for. Um, or um, So I think if this board has an opinion on that, then certainly yeah, but yeah, we can. If we see anything that we'd like to make sure that we look at, we can't mandate right. anything other than whatever we have control yeah. over. But if you have something that's important to you, make sure you get it in there. Well, I think to, to the uh, chair's point earlier, I think part part of the fencing does help to be sure that materials stay where they're supposed to. You know, sort of have an mm -hmm. open area. Things do tend to drift, oh, so yes. you you close them in, and it becomes pretty gravel. obvious. So. <laughs> Especially gravel. <laughs> do you have any problem if we if we had some? Asked for a fence in that area that you're looking for for storage? No, no I think Steve and I actually talked about that. Um, I think it would be. Yeah, because it, do, it does confine that area, yeah, so it can't right create no, 10 Ron feet. Ron does a nice job. <laughs> we haven't met Ron yet. Right, yeah. He's oh, a really yeah, nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we, we'd prefer not to have a, a swing gate in front, if that, maybe do it on three sides. That would contain it pretty well because there's a drive aisle. Yeah, that'd be so cool. that, that's maybe one thing we'd, we'd request. But. That sounds good. Any other questions or a motion? Oh, I'm sorry. I've not opened the public. So I want to take this time open the public if anybody wish to speak to this. If only eight persons that want to speak to this. <laughs> okay, just checking. Um, <laughs> do we have any letters or phone calls on this? Yeah, no. Okay. okay. I'll close the public hearing for it. Um, I just picked on Psycho's chair, so. <laughs> <laughs> The joke was you <laughs> hunting poking. Um, okay, so do we have a motion? Uh, move to approve. Um, really, as as requested, uh, I think I would prefer that the uh, that the planning board does discuss that uh, the fence issue. So, is it and the and the storage container? And that says a motion. Second 
Yes, I do. Okay. And I'd like to add to that four parking spots as opposed to two. Well, they have four in the plan. Four up, four up, so they end up, but they can't store. So, so six, six allow total them. parking spaces? No, <coughs> no, allow them four vehicles. Yeah. That way in case oh. they get up. I, yeah, I, at the times that you're storing the vehicles, there isn't anybody working there anyway, right? Correct. It's just so a, up to four vehicles to be stored on site, right. commercial vehicles. Understood. Just try to get a little bit more than so the goal is to do Appreciate it right. It. That's really the goal, is to do it right. And if we, a lot of people come in asking for less because they think they're not going to get the more. And they'd rather do it right the first time. So, and actually, that was a great idea by Mr. Blaze. So do we have a second on that? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Was, was your motion to request the three-sided fence to send to the planning board? That the, that the planning board discuss the fence and the storage container. Okay. And you okay with me adding that condition to you? Do you have that okay? So we have a motion and uh, a secondary motion that's accepted by the original person that made the motion, so it's just a one vote. Uh, we need to go through the uh, criteria for doing so. Okay. So we're just going to discuss it. Uh, my personal opinion is this is pretty clean. We can go through line by line no, if you want. Let's avoid things because this is controversial at all. To me, this seems pretty straightforward. It doesn't really require a yeah, lot I don't see any controversy. Okay. So well, we'll, just, we'll just, uh, any more discussion on the motion? No, in favor of the motion? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. You're business. Special exception appeal request by uh, Ryan mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at uh, 244 Ping Road. This <coughs> is map R40, uh, cross of four, of course. Uh, would you like to take the microphone, please? And you might be welcome to sit down or stand your choice <coughs> and just state your name and address for the record. And as with the first person, if you can speak as loud as you can, just because I'm not hearing. I'll try my best. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Yes, my name is Brian Eugene. I'm here for um, for 244 Payne Road to um, have it a, uh, a booth for a nail salon. Okay. And uh, no, other than the site is currently home to an existing uh, home occupation that was approved back in the 80s for a actually for a uh, auto mechanic repair shop, which is interesting because that's one of the things that's currently not allowed as a home occupation, but apparently it was back in, um, back then. Um, and so he's looking to convert from one home occupation to another home occupation. Now that, that's where kind of my question comes up before we go too far. I want to make sure I get a handle on this. In the home occupation section, uh, it says in section B, I'm in section nine, D3. Yeah. Okay. 
so, so I'll read it, and, and I'm not sure what you've had for a conversation with the planning department. Okay. I just want to get clarification on this before we do a lot of work. Uh, no more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling shall be employed in the home occupation. And when I look at your layout, I see one, two, three, four, five stations for nails, and I see four stations for pedicures. Uh, and um, I'm not sure what that is. That's a waiting area. So this is in what zone? This is a Tigers Parkway. So, Highgate Parkway, um, this is, when when we originally met with Ms. Clearpoint, <coughs> it was, Highgate Parkway allows um, uh, live work units, or it would actually allow, so the nail care service is considered a personal service, so that would be, per, uh, that's a permitted use in the Highgate Parkway. We'd have to go through site plan review. Um, it also allows sort of live work units. That would need to go through our plan development review process, which is sort of a owner's three-step process that's not a great fit for this lot. Um, or the other sort of alternative pathway forward that we talked about was really the conversion of one home occupation to another home occupation. Um, and so when we talked about that, that was one of the questions that we had talked about was, you know, this is truly a home occupation and the folks who live at the home are going to be the ones employed. So um, that was what seemed to be the best fit for the activity. But in the Highgate Parkway, yep. a home is a non-conforming use and they have to get, is this the home that had to have the exception? But isn't there a, isn't there a, um, why do I think there's a, is that the one that's up back there by the barn? No, this, yeah, this home that. is just on the right after you go past Cabela's. I think it's the first next. House. It's on first the right house. hand side. <coughs> first house. Has first house after yes, Cabela's. Yes, first, first house after Cabela's. First house after Cabela's. So basically a ranch. Yeah, but what I'm, what I'm confused yeah. about is, the, if I remember correctly, the Haggis Parkway Zone doesn't allow residential. So if, I guess, uh, this, this is the one that concerned me when I came in, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to get a hand so the board knows what I'm up to. When I saw this, I said, you know, how can you do this, not realize it's a uh, high zone. And for those of you who remember, if you haven't had a chance to look at it, one of the rules of the high zone is that <laughs> residential is a non-conforming use. So we had to actually, did we do it, we did, I can't remember whether or not we did a, contract zone or that house. I want to say that house had that contract zone no. or an exception. Something weird about yeah, it. Yeah, I looked in the, I remember looking in the file. Um, this was sort of early in discussions and, and subsequent to that, Brian Longstaff has certainly been more involved than I have. But um, as I said, back in the eight, eight, early 80s, the site received the special, except, uh, yes, special exception approval for the home occupation. Being asked to go through right now, um, so really this is a conversion of that existing home occupation to another home occupation, different style home occupation. So it's um, Keep, keeping the residents a resident. I guess that's. Right. I think that that, that was right. the initial. Like keeping the residents and yep. right. So it's a grandfather non-conforming use, correct? That's so we're saying. actually making it more conforming by allowing it. As a, would you say that that's? Well, I would say. To an extent, I would say personal services, nail salons are permitted, automobile uh, repair shops are not. However, these are really being considered home occupations, so it's it's sort of that fine nuance between what's the difference between a home occupation and a business, um, but in our ordinance, we sort of call it a business, so again, but yes, in, in sort of simple terms, I would say it is becoming more non-conforming because at least the home occupation activity is one allowed in the Haggis Parkway, and secondly, is one of the type of home occupations that's permitted, whereas a garage is explicitly not allowed as a home occupation, at least in today's ordinances. So, so this approval would make the site become more conforming. And so I think, back to your sort of original question, the, the main question uh, for the applicant to answer at this point that, that you had asked is sort of, who are, 
does it, will it meet that standard in terms of only one outside employee at the most? Um, and that we don't know the answer to yet. So well, that's, I don't know how to address this then. To me, my. You know, if, if we're supposed to uh, judge this based upon the performance standards, home occupations, mm -hmm. it's not going to Except for the fact that home occupation, I mean, a home is not allowed in the Highest Park. Well, I'm, I'm talking. Just, <laughs> this is I'm, weird. I'm, I'm talking just about the home occupation, regardless of really where it is. Yeah. It's a home occupation. So if I could, because he's converting from one type of home occupation to another, yeah. I believe it's that that's what requires this board's action. So you need to find that this new home occupation, so any home occupation that's ever approved, is approved for that activity only. <coughs> Someone else can't come in and change it. That's my understanding. But according to Mr. Place, he's yeah. right. Based on that assumption, you can't have anybody other than the person that lives there and one other person. And that's what we need to find out. But, but this is what I'm confused about, and, and I'm assuming that you're planning on having more than one person and, and making this into a business. That's correct. I mean, that, and that's the right answer is the truth. So thank yeah. you. you um, six or seven stations. I, I think it's to our advantage. I, to be candid with you, when I read this uh, today, uh, I was really struggling with it, and I actually thought there was no way in the world to do it. It didn't even make sense to me why it was coming forward. Because I, and I didn't catch the fact it was in the, in the, in the uh, highest parkway zone. Let but me try to, let me try clear on the nine unit that we're talking about. It's not like a nine people working in there. Um, a nail t station is one of the persons going to be take care of one of the pedicure. So this is only going to be four staff going to be working. That's include me and my wife. So it's only two outside of not bring a, not live there, but work there. Okay. What about the receptionist? I'm sorry? What about the receptionist? Yeah, that's going to be my job, working and reception. So I'm hearing that there's going to be two outside employees, and right. the ordinance only allows one outside employee. So to that, you would fail to meet that one standard under that. If that's a standard that would apply in <laughs> the highest parkway zone, which I don't think it does. And that's what I'm trying to get my arms around. I think Mr. Blaze is doing the same thing. <clears throat> Mr. Stark, too. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's, I'm just trying to find something here. So if you don't mind us kind of all looking at some paperwork first, do you want to read anything? Or? Can we go through the question? Uh, we can, but I'd like to uh, just have a second to get a hand <coughs> on what I'm looking at. Um, if, if this is allowable, it's an allowable business in the Hagen Park, right? Yes. Hey, you could do it. If it wasn't the house, you could do it all day long. It, it is you allowable. You can't make any difference whether it's the house or the house of grandfather. That's right. It is an allowable business. As a so service. we don't have to worry about a home occupation. This is a business. I agree with you. And it's allowable. No, so but that's a non-conforming use. Now. That's a non-conforming use. So in other words, and I'm trying it's to... It's not a home occupation. It, that, that's what... So, so yes, that's what I... So there's, there's a couple, as I said, when we first met and tried to sort of tease out the best way for this to move forward or the multiple ways this could move forward, we sort of laid out a number of options. So the highest Parkway does allow for mixed-use buildings. It does allow for building that has a dwelling and a business in it. Um, in that regard, so they would need to go through, as I sort of mentioned before, this plan development review process, which is a three-step review process before the planning board. The first step is, is a site inventory and analysis. Um, I'll sort of step back. The plan development process really is a design for much bigger sites, larger sites, sort of undeveloped sites. Um, this is, I think, roughly an acre parcel or so um, that's obviously already developed. So the first step is, as I was just saying, the site inventory analysis where the applicant needs to, um, they do a bunch of uh, analysis in terms of the natural constraints and built environment. Once that's sort of dealt with, the planning board then reviews it for a master plan, which generally lays out the, um, the, the building layouts, the infrastructure layouts for a site, and then it moves into site plan um, process. 
Um, and so while that is, that was one of the pathways that we suggested could be possible, but it seemed like a bit more of an off fit than converting an existing home occupation to a different home, to a new home occupation, because that really simply requires review by the Board of Appeals and doesn't require planning board review. Um, when they get into the planning board review, it becomes, you know, um, if the nail salon goes in and if it truly is, you know, if it's not going to be a home occupation and it's going to be a full business, then it will need to go through these steps. Um, but the way it was described is that it was going to be more of a home occupation. Um, and so if, if it were to meet the criteria of a home occupation, the way staff saw it was that it could be, this board would review it as a conversion of one home occupation to the other by applying those home occupation standards. Now, what we've heard tonight already is that there's going to be two outside employees, um, which means it doesn't meet our home occupation standards. So now we need to have that discussion about the other pathways forward, which is really through the planning board uh, review processes, not this board. But isn't the house portion of it grandfather already? So, yeah, certainly he could. How would it go back to a home occupation if the house was already a special exception? The house, the house is in a special exception. So the house, the house the is house, there first. Right, the house, yeah, the house is, is there first. Right, the so the residents well. can, is a grandfather, can, make, can remain. Okay. It's the, so if he just wants to go in and didn't want to operate any business there, just wanted to move his family in and live there, he wouldn't require any review at all. Unless it hadn't been occupied for a year. Correct. Then, then has then it been occupied regularly? That's our understanding. Yes. Um, so then it's because of the change of. Stock, I think it's found something yep. that needs to go into the record here. Well, it just it, it still makes it a little ambiguous here. Yeah, and these are the court requirements. If you um, looking under under the residential uses. Number 28, it says live work units uh, and only as part of the mixed use plan development is specified under subsection 2C5. When you go to 2C5, um, it's required, re requires plan development to incorporate uh, boarding care facilities for the elderly and nursing homes, but it also includes others. So I'm going to read the whole thing. It's boarding care facilities for the elderly. That, that, that's, that? I actually looked at that earlier. That's Clearly, an administrative error. I think okay. what it means to turn it to is 2C4, which is 2C4 okay. is requirement of plan developments incorporating live, live work, work units, so residential okay, dwellings. Dwelling. So, yeah, that's just an administrative hiccup in our ordinance that needs to get cleaned up. Okay. okay. Um, so, yes, you're right. If he could do it under either a live work unit, if he met those standards, or a dwelling unit in a mixed use building, um, again, if he met those standards. Why wouldn't um, he meet? Why wouldn't he meet? Live work standards. What's, what's the uh, wall there? So definition of live work. I mean, we could sort of ease our way through it, but again, it sounds like the home Usually occupation. We make you work. Usually, <laughs> so, so Brian just work. complains about us. <laughs> we can make you work a little bit. A live work unit is a mixed use unit within a multifamily dwelling or mixed use building that contains both living space and workspace. The workspace shall be limited to no more than 1,000 square feet of floor area. So that's what we need to understand. So we don't, I haven't teased through those details because at this point the request is for a home occupation, which he's not meeting. But does the garage count as floor area? Does the garage, you mean the, the, where the business is? Yeah. No, that would be the business area. So we've got. Mr. Chairman, could, may I ask a question on behalf of the client? That Absolutely. Just a question. So if could the... You just take your name and... Sorry. Karen Martin. I'm the director of the Scarborough Economic Development Corporation. Yeah. Um, if the hang-up or if the, the difficulty is on the number of employees, one question I would have, because you're going from one non-conforming use to another non-conforming use, um, if the previous non-conforming use had more than one outside employee, can that be considered part of the standard by which um, he's measured? So if, it, if they had two employees at that place and he's not having more than two employees, um, could that work? I just, I don't know. A good question, but technically that right. rule's been in place for a long time. Mm -hmm. So they may have done that, 
but they wouldn't have been authorized to do it. But it's a great question. Um, thank you. Um, all right. Unlike unlike the other zones, you go to any of the other zones. It kind of says permitted uses. It's kind of straightforward. The highest parkway one is not as clean, in my opinion, as those. So. What was the live work you were talking about, Mr. Chairman? The, the live work is, I think actually Mr. Stark pointed it out to me. Uh, the live work basically is uh, uh, Carrie Anderson's project over on where, the, where on Route 1 was going to be that. But basically you'd have a situation where you'd have the downstairs would be a business and you live on the second floor. Uh, that never came to fruition, but that was the <coughs> And that would be, a t so you'd have like five of these row houses where you'd have small businesses and they'd go, you know, but honestly, kind of the good old fashioned way that the United States is built. You worked out of your house, you know, all the time and you did, you know, it's kind of really out, it's done. So, and so it's, it, it gets, up to, the other example of that is the, the restaurant that does the, uh, uh, right across from, right across from, Children. They, they it's a new name now, I believe. Is it? But that was the same concept. They had a work situation there. What's What's challenging me is what I thought was a roadblock that wasn't able to get passed is now seeming to be candid relatively easy because we've got an existing use. I agree. If Mr. Blaze said this, I'm not sure, but I think I understood you to say. We're not really talking about the home residence. We're strictly talking about the business. Yeah. And they are separate entities and that may be attached, but they're separate entities. Right. Is that how you're seeing it? Yeah. And the business is allowable in the district. That's kind of how I'm interested. Regardless of Jump in if you have, a, you have a face like this. I'm not so sure. <laughs> so jump in. So you're saying the garage is a business and the house is a separate exception? Well, the house is is grandfather. Right. And the goal is to convert it the goal is to convert the entire Haggis Parkway, basically taking the assumption that the goal is to take Haggis Parkway and make it into a, a business area. That's why they didn't put residence as a option. So the residence is a non conforming use. I think the biggest question I have is does this board have the capacity to say, yeah, you can have two employees? Um, or no, is it it's just one? Well, if you We're use the that. if you use the definition of home occupation, right. one. Yeah. And that's it. There's no so this board doesn't have the authority to say, you're in Haggis Parkway, you can have two. Well, we can make the decision to decide exactly what Mr. Blaze suggested, which is right. that the Haggis Parkway, that's a, that is in fact a uh, non-conforming use of record, and the goal is to get it more in line with businesses that we want in Haggis Parkway. So, you know, the best thing that could happen is his business grows to the point where he takes the house and converts it over to an entire thing. So, we're getting more in compliance as opposed to less in compliance, although uh, that's, how, that's kind of how I'm looking at it. Here's the one thing that kind of puts a roadblock on it. Uh, it's one of the requirements. The, these are the, the four requirements, and this, this top one. Given the uh, Haggis Parkway district is, is principally a business district, the floor area of all residential uses within the plan development shall be a maximum of 40% of the total floor area of all the building floor uh, area within the plan development. The way you get out of that, and I don't think you're getting out of it, but I think the, the reasonable fact of that is that considering Haggis as new construction, I don't think they thought about somebody taking an existing construction. I was there when we built the, the, the Haggis, the, the, Paperwork, so I remember it pretty well, and you were in the zoning board at the time, I think. So I remember going through the Haggis Parkway plan, and the goal was there were like a couple of houses that, by in essence, we had to grandfather them because we banned homes from that development because that wasn't the goal. And uh, our theory was that the value of the land would exceed the value of the home, and so people would eventually that would weed away. Now, on the Payne Road section of Haggis, I never even thought about it. But if, if we're keeping true to what the Haggis zone is, 
and we've got a home that is non-conforming use, and the gentleman comes forward to us and says, I want to bring this more into conformity with the zone, but I'm not able to make it 100% in conformity with the home. So I can't meet the 40% rule, but I can do this, and with the goal of growing my business to the point where um, that, as any business hopefully does, is to grow. So when I'm looking at it, I'm, I'm taking a look. I don't think we can apply the home office use, the home business use to this because it's not allowed in the zone. We can't do a home business, but the home business is there, so it's grandfathered. So all we're doing is making it more conform, we're making it more conforming. If you think of this, say this was on, on Higgins Beach, right? And we decide to move the lot, we, we say, look, if you're gonna use the same size footprint, but you're gonna move it more to the center and to the front. It doesn't allow us to do that necessarily, except for the fact that we're bringing it more in compliance with the goal of, the, of that zone. I'm treating this very much like, I, I'm just one guy, so you know, jump in, but I, I've been beating my, all day long I've been beating my head around this one. Um, and I've been trying to figure out what, what, what do we have here? And to me, what we've got is a home that's grandfathered, so really irrelevant. And we're taking part of that on, which was used as an automobile place, but now we're making it more compliant by putting in something that is more consistent with what we'd expect at a Hyatt Parkway zone. Because our, the, the repair stations are not allowed. So we've done two things. We've eliminated something that, so we've actually taken away the, 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 the repair shop, which isn't allowed in the zone. So we've solved half of the problem. We can't solve all of the problems.
can I kind of test the board? Does anybody have a, con a problem with the concept of him having a, and, and, and there's not a wrong answer here, I just need to get, I get a feel of board. Having a, a business like this where there's whatever number of employees he needs in the Highgate Park Waste. Not in that zone. I, I do not because it's, because of the uniqueness of the zone that it's in, also adjacent to the other businesses that are nearby. The only reason I would have an issue with it is because that's what we're considering. Okay. And it's clearly written. What I'm looking for is just the question of whether or not you have a problem with it. I'm taking the rule right away. What I want to do is I want to, I'm testing the waters of where the board is at. Because if the board is all in, in agreement that this is reasonable and we'd like to see him accomplish this with the least pain possible, and we can do that without... Um, breaking our own rules, because I think there's a potential of breaking our own rules by voting for it as a convert as a conversion of a use. I think we can do it two ways, do it as a conversion of a use and so take the two pieces. Given the fact that it's it's vague, we take the position of we are allowing it to be converted from one use to another. And then we have, that allows us to then go to the product that Mr. Stark mentioned which allows it to be a work use place. So we've given him the ability to have as many employees as he wants. But we can't do that. Right, we can't do that. That's well, what they just said. Well, I'm not sure we can't do that. I'm not, I'm not sure we can't. Uh, Sounds like staff thinks we can't. We can't do what? I mean, I mean if we, this is somebody the judicial board, I think we can do it. I think we have the right to do what we want to do. And if the planning board wants to sue this board, they can. But, <laughs> I mean, but we're, we're quasi-judicial as long as we're not breaking any regulation. I, I see no reason why he can't just start his own nail business in the Hagus Parkway. It's an allowable use, right? The business is allowable. I'm assuming and he's starting it in a house. I mean, a house that's got a garage to it. I mean, how many businesses has Apple started in the garage? Yeah, look at that guy. Uh, <laughs> does the town want this business in this location? I, I'm simply stating what we believe the ordinance <coughs> allows. Okay. Um, so, again, the, you town know, is, the town is not having any angst. No, no, okay. no. As I said, we, we see there are multiple pathways forward for this, and that's what we tried to spell out. We thought the home occupation conversion was the simplest, but if the board wants to go another direction, uh, it's it in your been, leisure. And it would have been had it been just one employee. Right. Had, had you guys, employee. had you folks known that it was more than one employee, we, we wouldn't would, have had would, this before Had us. he told us it was more than going to be more than one outside employee, it wouldn't even be before you. And it probably wouldn't happen because my guess is the cost of going through that site plan, plan process is, that's is, a $40,000 yeah. job if they're lucky. And then there'll be fees, and yeah, it's a nightmare. I mean, I, it's not a nightmare because of Skyler. It's the right thing to do in certain situations when you're putting a business in place. And Skyler does a really good job. I'm really proud of Skyler, and I actually built a house, a building, mm -hmm. and studied it to find problems. So when I look at Skyler's ordinances, it's fine. When you're building a 30,000 foot building, it's not that big of a deal. When you want to have a hairdresser shop and nails or, or pedicure, you've got to do a, you've got to do a traffic analysis. You've got to, it's a nightmare. And I don't think that's reasonable. And so I guess what I'm getting at is this is a quasi-judicial board which means anybody that wants to challenge this has to go to the next court for us. I don't believe that the planning board has a desire to go to court against us. Maybe they do, but I think they have other things to do. So as long as they're not going to have a problem with our decision, they can do whatever they want after the fact. They've still got control of this process after the fact. It still goes to them, correct? I guess it's going to depend on how you craft oh, <laughs> what what you're putting together. I'm, I, so I'm 
I'm, what you're saying. I, I've, I've said my piece. All right. So I, I will. Brian would tell I, us what to do. I, the, one, the, the, one thing, the one thing that I have thought about in this conversation and where, it's, where, where we really seem to be heading at this point and, and I think makes a lot of sense in a lot of ways and, and might sort of be the pathway that staff would think is um, fits within the ordinance is really looking at our section three nonconformance and really looking at this as a um, uh, uh, expansion of a nonconforming use. And under section F, it talks about a nonconforming use of land, building, or structures may be enlarged, extended, expanded, reserved, or converted to another nonconforming use on the lot which it occupied at the effective date of the amendment. This is what we wanted you to do a half an hour ago. <laughs> that, I think, it, I think that meets our requirement. Was that your third option? That is, that's probably option four or five, you know. <laughs> it's a, but that, that's really what I'm hearing sort of the conversation gravitating towards, that you're not comfortable with the home occupation uh, conversion, which for reasons that we're now understanding we can't do anyway, that that's really the process. And so that's a, a, a separate application that Mr. Nguyen had to put together for you, I believe, because if I remember correctly, I believe that process under section five requires, I want to be sure, I, is that different, is it different than the special exception? It, maybe, maybe this one, I'm trying to, I think, I think there's something that requires planning board to give an advisory opinion and, and well, if, it, if it's not this, then I don't think it is. Uh, this is a mis miscellaneous appeal, so no, that wouldn't be a miscellaneous appeal. Mighty paws, mighty paws, right? Mighty paws, right? Why can't we? Why can't we just decline this? We could, and then. Have them work. <coughs> have them work with the planning department and the code enforcement guys. The, the problem is, how come, do you come up with a re revised one? Don't charge them any more money and have them come back. If you were to table it, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think the better the better bet would be to table it and have them come back with what you're suggesting. Mm -hmm. I, the trouble with that is because then he doesn't have the fees and things I, that go along with it. I think that the reality is, this going to the planning board is going to have to go through the standard process. No, I, I'm sorry. So what the planning board looks at, the planning board wouldn't go through the whole site plan process. What they would look at is they would provide comments to this board on, on the ones. same standards that you're reviewing. That's like the document. Just like that the they did. Is that required in this one? That's required in the conversion or the expansion of the non. So it wouldn't be supplying. It would be, we'd be tabling, tabling, tabling it. Tabling it for yeah. next month. Until whenever you can put together a non conformance. And do you remember the dog place? It's exactly well, it like that. Exactly it like that. Goes to the planning board first. As, and they provide advisory opinion only. Yeah, they send down the advisory and then we vote it upon it. It comes back to us. It comes back with you, an opinion. You're, you're, you're still the, you're the deciders. You're All right, so let me throw another curve at you. <laughs> what about us doing it the way we're thinking about doing it and See putting it subject? <laughs> no, putting it subject to the planning board's advisory opinion. I would be more comfortable we tabling it and coming back. Because that way we're following all the rules and the, the process, process seems like yeah. it's easier. We've got the advisory board, we've got the advisory opinion for the planning board. We had one that was just like it. It was very easy, it was simple to do. I, I guess my, my concern is, and maybe I'm over, over concerned, but uh, the gentleman's been working with the town on a plan that he was advised to come to here and go through this process. And in my opinion, the town fumbled. And I don't want to drag it out another month. I don't, he's probably got a mortgage on it. I don't know if he's or not. But it's expensive. Um, one month is an expensive amount of money. <coughs> and I, I just, we know the planning board is going to come back with an advisory opinion that's acceptable. It, we know that they're going to come back with that, in my opinion. But he can't, he can't do anything, even if we did it like that. He can't do anything about, he can't do anything until he gets an advisory, a positive advisory uh, from the planning board. He's but still, still going to have that. But it still saves time because 
He would be able to get back to you for your, let's see, what's the date? Today is July 13th. So he could probably get back to you for August. But, the, but, but, the, but if we approve it the way you said, with them giving it an advisory <coughs> approval on it, as soon as they gave that, he wouldn't have to come back here. And if it's negative, if it's negative, the rule says that we are not supposed to override the planning board's position. Right. And so it would be, say the planning board comes back and says no. We advise against this. This we can hold this in place subject to their approval, and, and right. nothing's changed. Right. It stops because the planning board's decision. Uh, what's it rule say? It says we, we can't go against the planning board. We can, but we have to have a legitimate right. reason. Yep. Yeah, it says before making a decision on a miscellaneous appeal from restrictions on non-conforming uses, the zoning board shall refer said appeal to planning board for an advisory opinion. The zoning board shall not act contrary to the planning board recommendations unless it makes specific findings to the fact that justify its decision. So uh, what, what Ms. Patterson is uh, advising me of is that August, planning board meets on August 8th, this board meets on August 10th. So they would, so there would be a difference if we postpone. No, it would be, it's still gonna go before them because it's just gonna be two days be, difference. It would be two nights difference. Did you have a question for us? Yes, I, 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 just, <laughs> wanna, uh, I just wanna say this is my first home occupations for me. I'm a little confusing because my guy is supposed to be here, but he's not. So that's why I don't have anything in front of me. You're okay. So let me, let me it, walk you through what we're doing. So this my picture is my picture is to have the uh, <clears throat> a um, a nail shop for to raise my kid at the same time because we had three girls, um, two, eight, and thirteen. So we have we, we we try to raise them up here. So we move from Waterville down here. Oh, yeah. So I'm moving Waterville down here. So I'm kind of working on this stuff here. So you know, you know, we try to make try to make it happen to move down so they can in the school. Uh, going to um, two thousand. If we go the path we're going, which I, I like actually, it would allow, I think your issue, both of your issues, which is to keep it in line and the traffic pull you guys want it going, it would, if the planning board for whatever reason has a, a problem with the concept, it gives them an opportunity to state that. Uh, if it doesn't, then we know how we can, we've got a plan to deal with, with the, the um, ambiguity well, even the last comment that he just read is we can't go against them unless we have good cause. And I think we've already established that the chairman's put in place his cause for doing something like that. So I think even if they came back with a negative reaction, we should probably. I'm go, I'm, I'm go with anything you guys allow me to do. Because I really answer. don't, well, I, 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 this is my first time, so I, you know. It's, right. looking, it's looking like August 10th at this point. Would that work for you, for us to be able to make a decision on it? Uh, so essentially what we're talking about is, uh, so what you've submitted as a home occupation, the board, this board's unable to act on because what you've told them is that you're gonna have two employees so that are outside the home, which which is which it can't meet our home occupation standard. Right. So what you're gonna to need to do, and we can talk about this, we should probably get together very soon, as in tomorrow or Friday, is put together an application back to this board, which is actually gonna to go to our planning board. Again, we'll talk about that, um, for what's gonna be considered a conversion and expansion of a non-conforming use. And that's how this will move forward. And it's sounding, what I'm hearing from this board is generally in favor of what you're proposing, but we just need to find that right pathway. If you remember when we sat down a month or two ago and we yeah, talked that's, about- Yeah, that, that, that's what I got Right, there, there's a number of different ways this could go. This board is, based on the responses we received, we've now found the pathway, but I think this discussion is really sort of showing a light on what is, is now the true pathway forward. Let me throw another curve at everybody here. Uh, I'm, 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 my inner Brian. 
Um, <clears throat> does it matter whether or not this fits perfectly into the fact that it's a Highgate Parkway zone or anything else? So home occupation, if we approve this as home occupation, we want our first one set's approved and he's in the highest parkway zone, that one person problem goes away because it's a road. Not entirely. To have more than the one person, then he'd be converting his home occupation into a business, which would then require him to go through the planning board process. However, <laughs> let me let me tease this through. What the board has before you tonight is a home occupation application. Yeah. This board could make action on the home occupation action with the stipulation, only one employee, he can get going. He can come back to this board, whether it's August, September, October, whatever fits his schedule for the conversion of the non-conforming use. So then he becomes more of a business. I can only say that. So that gets him going to, to your earlier concern about, you know, delays. I, I just know how hard so it is. Well, can we do this? <laughs> this is good. This is what I love about this no. board. Since, <laughs> since, <laughs> since the prior non-conforming. It isn't usually like this for the had, first time. Had two this is my first time here, too, so. I think oh, the, qu okay. the question was, that was a hypothetical. Uh, okay. I think that, was a, okay. that, that took right. us to a. I think it did. So, <laughs> so if you're, from what I'm hearing you say, we would still review this as a home occupation, sure. vote on it, with the assumption that he, with, with the stipulation, stipulation, he can only have one employee. One outside the home. And employee. then he comes back in August or whenever he wants to, and we can do it the way that you found right there. Yep. But my question is to you, is he going to have to pay more fees to come back to us to do that? Or would we essentially waive the fee, do this kind of like a misstep on how we guided him to come? Well, I, I, I think right under the ca bus. calling it a misstep is a, it's, <laughs> there's a lot of pathways. We talked about all of these. So yeah. there, there's, there's a lot of options that could have been Granted, we didn't have all the information either because right. we so, had one employee. Well, so right. so, it, it, so it's a whole lot. Let's explain. So let's, I would say, yeah, you'd probably have to resubmit an application fee. What that application fee is probably in the order of $250 or something to that effect. Or is that what it is? Yeah. Would, so, it, would it have to go back if nothing's changing? But he's already told he, us. He, so what, what he submitted, this application, is a home occupation application. And, and the letter would have to go out. Right, we would have, because, because that would be then something different. That would be a different application. Even though it's in a... Even though it's in the HP zone, right? Because he's what he's asking for is really be, so. Again, we sort of have to tease through. Yeah. Through. yeah. All right. So so, let's go through the <coughs> criteria based on the assumption that we're leaning in this direction. Is that? What, do you want to talk with with your Citco advisor? Well, I was just going to talk to that. I was just trying to help. I haven't. Her. Well, she. she, she, she. Uh, I didn't know her. She's well. the person you want to talk to. I know. So, so, I know. so again, what we're talking <laughs> really, about, if, if the board if goes through the, the review process tonight, what they would be approving is that you could only have one outside employee Understand until it. you come back and get further approvals. So the board could either. Yep. So if you could sort of live with that for the next month or two or whatever it takes to sort of put together the application again, we can get together right away and start talking about that. Um, then I think. If the board will approve that, I think it's right. a really good idea. Yes. Well, so does he? My only question here is: Do you understand that if we approve this, you still, when you come back to do the other uh, approval, you're going to have to pay another fee? I understand that. Okay. Yeah. So. But maybe I maybe I didn't see you guys. You guys, I just want one employee. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> but if they come down and there's more than one employee and they visit, no, you, I, that I, I understand that. That's true. Trouble, it's, got, it's not, but the problem is it's going to be mailed. The fee isn't, uh, we don't get one penny on that. It's it's the advertising. That's, That's what I was it. hoping we could do would be it's get the around the fee yeah. if we were going to do that. I would feel If it more were an internal fee, I would agree with that, but I don't think we have the right to have to play with taxpayers' money. No, and it's, and, it, and it's nothing compared to going through the whole review process. Yeah, it, it, it's, right. it's one, yeah. All right, so, so let's do this. Let's, let's continue the path if everybody's comfortable with what, where I'm, I'm trying to learn. And we're just going to make some the assumption. So what I'm, I'm going to do here, and if I could get uh, the chair of the central board to go over and 
Actually, let me give you this to help them through this. Okay. I would greatly appreciate it. And thank you for being here. So right. what we'll do is, just so you can introduce each other, this is sort of like a blind date. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what are my better ones then? <laughs> so, so what, what this lady does is she works for the Scarborough Economic Development Corporation. Her job is to help businesses like you work through this maze. And it is a maze. And she's very good. So I have, having her get up there with you, <laughs> you, know, you got, you're going to have to buy her a meal. Uh, so when you get My up, services are free. So having her get, <laughs> so get up there with you, Email just stuff. so as we ask the questions, she can kind of walk through with you what, what the person that should be here <coughs> to support you uh, would do. Okay. And and I, I I don't I honestly don't we'll stop it with that. So if I can steal somebody else's sheet just because I gave them away. Okay, so here, here we go in the standards is a special exception. The proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, <coughs> or other aspects of its design or operation. What you can answer for. <laughs> It's an existing home. I assume you already have the um, all of your sewer connections and everything is all set, so there's not going to be a, a change. No, and you're in the sewer only septic. Hmm? You're in sewer or septic down oh. there. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. One step further. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't even realize the application was there. Excellent. Um, so yeah, so on the uh, standards for the special exceptions, um, all the chemicals will be disposed of off-site. What, what chemicals are you talking about? Um, so if you're, uh, I'll let you answer that, but it's your, it's a nail salon. And so the nail salon is um, uh, acetones and, and you know, polish remover. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, have, you, have, you have to have a, a specific story. Say for instance, there was, a, is, what would, that, what would, what could happen in that site that would cause an environmental event? Is there enough? Acetone, whatever the product in it, if there was an earthquake and the building fell over, would, would it have any, is there enough to matter or is it just minimal? Well, all, all, all the chemical is going to be stuck out because we're going to have like um, ice force and it's going to suck or they smell out and stuff. So, so most of it's odor versus. Yeah. What is okay. that going to though? What is it going to be sucking it to? Yeah, it's going out to uh, the back door. And I mean, filter. Yeah, you have to filter. Neighbors or anything? No. No. Okay. And probably use, I'm assuming you're using HEPA filter. Using standard procedures. Uh, the, the next one is the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to existing or foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Good answer. He's gonna um, he's gonna have plenty of parking for the customers and they'll it'll be arranged so he can they'll be able to turn around um, within the parking lot instead of um, needing to back out onto Payne Road. Have you seen that design layout? Does it work? Um, if you, yeah, when you drive by the site, but it's a very large driveway. It's pretty easy. To so it's easy to negotiate yeah. and go turn around in the what, driveway. What we don't want anybody doing is backing out onto Payne Road. Yeah. They'll only do it once. How many parking spaces? <laughs> What's that? How many parking spaces? I'm not certain how many parking, but it's not, um, it's not a striped parking area. It's really just the whole air front area is pavement. Um, so, uh, yeah. Sufficient. What's that? It's sufficient. It, it would seem sufficient okay. for a home occupation <laughs> one employee. We want to tell you. <laughs> right. You've got cars <laughs> parked there, and someone comes in, someone can still negotiate and turn around yep. if the car is parked yeah, there. Yeah, if, if, if I'm remembering right, um, I can look it up here, but I think it's it's a wide open curb cut. It's not sort of just your standard one car, you know, where it was an auto repair shop. I think it's very wide on one side. There's a small island. You can sort of move. This is swoop JR's. Around. What's that? This is JR's. You know, I can't remember the name. It's right on the right hand side after you go by Cabela's. Um, you, you know, what we could do is why don't we put, if you're okay with this, we'll put just if this is approved, uh, subject to the. Subject to the, the uh, code enforcement, ensuring that the parking is sure. safe, sufficient. Sure. Okay. So 
Proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. I'm assuming you're not doing any, there's not construction going on, so there's going to be no change to the site? No. Oh. There's not. Okay. And no dumping in the water supply. Or anything. Are you going to be doing any yard work at all or uh, vegetation? Is there any water nearby that would require filtering? Is there a river that's, is it a brook or something near, relatively near the property that would flow down or is it, is it fairly flat? So everything is rolling out the ground, the river is magically the water is run out. So you're not, cha you're not changing the plant, the plant, no. the plantings or anything yeah. like that. So there's no change. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to visual, uh, physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. That's a tough one since there's not that much development on Highgate Parkway and that area, but um, clearly it's not going to be impacting um, the residences um, since he, who, who are your neighbors on either side? I'm trying to think of that lot. Oh, I have only one neighbor's okay. side. And The other so side's the other Cabela's, side, right? Yeah. Mm. Cabela's driveway around the back, right. isn't it? Yeah. And the fireworks. And that's not in the shoreline. It's not in the shoreline. Shore I almost have the area up here for you. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> I'll show you folks down at this if, end. If he's okay with it, I'm okay with it. <laughs> I, was, I was a little off on the driveway, but it is a larger opening than it's, standard opening. It's this one here, right? It's this and one here. And you, oh, you purchased yeah. the property oh, already? Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. And you, you have the deed, and it's your property. Uh, the applicant has, uh, you, you've got enough money to be able to put this job together and complete the work. Mm -hmm. And you, like you've run this type of business before? Yes. Yeah, yeah. so, so he's got experience. I've worked in this type of business before, but I'm in the commercial In water? In water. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to generation of noise and hours of operation. What are your hours planned? My hour is going to be from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. I, I don't want to put restrictions on hours if we can help it because it's Tigus. But it, I think the answer you've got here is reasonable. Exceeds the, it's going to be consistent with the other neighbor businesses. Yeah, 10 to 7, so. Exactly. It can't be, it's less hours than Cabela's is open, so. That's all of them. Let's do this. Let me open the, the, the public. Is anybody from the public wish to speak on this? I haven't seen anybody from the planning board running down here, which is good news. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably hear about it tomorrow. They're trying to get So, uh, clo uh, actually, do we have any letters on this? No. Nope. Nothing? No nope. phone calls? Nope. I'll close the public hearing and we'll come back to the board. Now, here's what I'd like to do uh, I'd like to take each one of these and go. Uh, Break down through, and we we'll, we'll just step down the center and work our way through. Um, thank you. Any anything I'd like to all of it be on the record, and all of it be part of our findings and uh, the law. So, uh, finding fact and interpretation of law, just so that uh, if anybody needs to go back to refer as to how we ended up here, um, they can see the trail. Uh, although there might be more. There's a long trail. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go back to the first one. The proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhelpful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. Well, you stated that all the chemicals will be disposed off-site and you can have some sort of air filtration in that building. Yeah, the fact that it's not going to be disposed of on site. Um, I can't remember if that, on that side, is that? That's not technically on the other side of the turnpike, so that's probably s no. sewer. <laughs> it's not septic, yep, right? No, sewer goes in front of that site, correct. Yeah, I'm fine with it if it's sewer. Septic, I might be a little bit more. Yeah, and I see no issues with it, especially there, since there's no construction that's going to be, going to be happening, so no, uh, no impervious soil being stirred there. Same reason. 
It's just all right with it. <laughs> I agree with the board. I feel that uh, that one's fairly straightforward. I have no problem with it. The proposed use will not, uh, actually, why don't we vote on that specific item? All in favor of this item A being accepted. So the board says unanimous on A. The proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing or foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Well, based on uh, looking at the aerial view that um, we just saw, there's adequate parking for anyone going in and out of the building being able to turn around without backing onto the road, which he has stated here as well. So I am fine with this. Yeah, I'm fine now that we've seen the picture and, and the site looks like <coughs> parking for at least four to six cars there. The only thing I would suggest is make sure when you put up a sign or something, no backing out into Payne Road. But yeah. And I can't imagine that there'd be a, any significant amount of additional traffic more than what was there with prior to this. Good. <laughs> Fine, yeah, good. Couple of words. <laughs> if you say good. <laughs> no, after looking at it, I think it looks good. Okay. Um, th does it require uh, the town to inspect it? So our board still okay with For parking? I, I think he's already inspected it and has told us that it's it's sufficient for you don't see any problem with getting it or not. Mm -hmm. All in favor of B. That's unanimous. C. The proposed use will not create public safety problems which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. And he has stated this will not um, based on the previous uh, home business that was there before, I don't see any change from what was existing to what is being proposed, so I am in agreement with this. I would say with this business, there's less fire safety hazards than automobiles being there with kept gasoline, gasoline and oils and all kinds of other stuff, so I'm fine with it. I would have to agree with that, and I don't think that uh, most of these women come in for get their nails done or they need the police. <laughs> Would you say? Uh, I'll answer for uh, Mr. Blaze. Sure. Sure. <laughs> and I agree with the board. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, the proposed use of the. Uh, Did you want to vote? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll, I'll favor that. Thank you. All favor is unanimous. All right, so I'm on D, right? Oh. Uh, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on the water supplies. We're going to start down at this end. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with the board. No. <laughs> I, I don't see how this would, would be affected at all. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> He's the one that's answering the questions. So I, I agree with his answer. I'm not going to. Okay. I have no idea. I'm going to be perfectly honest. None of this I have no idea because he's answering the question. You're asking me to answer the question. Actually, I want to answer the question. Well, what we've got to do, though, is we, on record, from a legal point of view, we've got to be able to defend our position in the event that somebody comes out and, and says, you didn't do your job right. So the reason why we're looking for an answer other than yes or no is what is your logic behind how you got to where you are? And it can be nothing more than I agree with him. He seems like he's damn it. I agree with that. It makes sense. But, but that's the reason why. But really, an upfront statement about this whole thing and how we got to where we are is more important than us. Right. But we have to go through this before we get the upfront statement. So we'll get to the upfront statement. Right. This is the whole finding of fact. Yeah. So we're just, we're just getting this out of the way so then we can co combine everything. That's fine. Yeah, I can see no additional sedimentation. Yeah, if there's no dumping or anything going in to the back of the area or anything, I know that none such runs, I'm not sure if none such runs through that property, but I don't see anything that would be foreseeable. And based on the applicant's answer, I don't have a concern. Uh, sure, I agree with the board. And the pros use result. Vote. Oh, sorry. Vote. 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 Vote.
Either proposed use will not be compatible, will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. We're going to do it again to her down there. Reading it. I'm sorry. That's okay. Take your time. This is. Uh, um, I think his answer is sufficient. Any other comments to it? I'm certainly a different size than Cabela's, but other than that, <laughs> I mean, he's a, he's a business. Like color pink. Thank you. Allowable. Yeah, I don't see any adverse uh, adversity to, to the size or the impact. No, for this business, it's probably got one of the less visual sizes and impact. I mean, you're right next door to Cabela's and the fireworks and the golf place across the street and the doctor's office. So this is definitely less impact than any of those buildings. Right, Mr. Crockett um, stated what I was going to state in that, in oh. that, in that uh, I mean, you're, you're next to the Cabela's Plaza and the, the nearest residence far enough away that it blends in. It's not going to stand out. First way. And I would argue that Payne Road is very quickly converting to other than residential. It could happen faster than I thought it would. That doesn't mean that you disrespect the residents there, the food <coughs> live there, but the truth is that they're seeing the transfer, which is consistent with the um, uh, comprehensive plan, too. So. Uh, we're not in the Shoreland Zone. Oh, oh. Oh, so. <laughs> All in favor? Uh, the shoreline zone, we're not in the shoreline zone, so we've done enough to vote on that one. The applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site, and uh, just by statement earlier, he owns the property, so all in favor. Okay. And uh, the applicant's technical financial ability uh, to meet the standards, he has indicated earlier that he does. Uh, he's got a nice shirt on, so it seems like it's okay. So everybody's agreeing with that. And then uh, proposed use would be uh, compatible with the use of the neighborhood with respect to generation of noise and hours of operation. It's going to be standard for any business in that area. Yeah. And Cabela's is probably the benchmark. So I see, I yeah. see no issues there. The hours are definitely within the guidelines. Um, yeah. So when we go down again on that one, Ed, I'd like to have the answer through. Well, I mean, this, um, what Brian is suggesting or stating in his application is that they'll be closed prior to when Cabela's is going to be closed or won't be it's lasting. I'm, not, I'm basically trying to eliminate that 10 to 7 thing. I, I'm saying let it stand as what that zone is re allowing, which is there's no time limits. Okay. I, I don't want to be consistent with the zone. Sure, sure. Then I would, um, I would agree with his answer that is the hours of operation see the hours of operation of the neighboring businesses. That's to me that's that zone's pretty weak. Okay. Yeah, I would agree with the hours of operation, but he has told us he has three daughters, so I don't think he's gonna be open <laughs> more than ten to seven. So <laughs> no, and I agree. Uh, it seems like we've got businesses from fairly early, which would be Cabela's all the way up to famous days that's probably open till ten or eleven. So okay. pretty pretty big range. Good hours. <laughs> 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 I mean, I think he's going to have less hours than, his, than the neighboring businesses, so I don't see that as a problem. So I just to clarify, <laughs> we're eliminating the, in his write-up, he had said 10 to 7. And so we're saying that that's coming off our... No, we didn't. No, we didn't. The hours of operation will not exceed the hours of operation in the neighboring Oh, I'm sorry. It was, uh, it was stated. It was stated. Right. Yeah. stated records what technically goes. That's why I was yeah. uh, So we're basically. We won't hold a restriction. We're not going to hold him to a stated right. statement. Written statement governs. There it is. All in favor? Yes. Uh, it's unanimous. Okay. So uh, for the standards and the special exception, based on the assumption that this is, in fact, a. Uh, use. What are we doing here with this? This is. Uh, Home occupation and the transfer and the use. Uh, all in favor of or any discussion actually first <coughs> on uh, just, just one thing. I, <coughs> you, you do understand that you can have a sign. You're 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 able to have a sign. That's, um, the street sign? The street
small street sign yet. Well, that's another yeah. conversation we need to have with the because uh, it's in the high use zone. Oh, that's right, it is in the high use zone. <laughs> so let's come back to that. Okay. <laughs> Good question. Okay. All right. Um, so other than that, no. Any other comments? Any other questions? So here's my here's my synopsis of this. This is a very, very unique circumstance where under normal circumstances, this would be fairly straightforward in a regular zone. Highest Parkway zone is, is a zone that's very unique and eliminated uh, residential in its process, even though residential had been there for years. So consequently, it's taken away a right that somebody previously would have had. And so based on that logic, I think we are restoring that right because it's grandfathered to be able to have a uh, conversion of an existing use to a different use, thus allowing us to be able to justify this process in this manner to allow him to be able to run his business based on the criteria that were brought before us. And that's the logic I'm using. Does anybody challenge that or question that? Or want to no, the only thing I have is where, where in the questions was it for the one employee? Um, the uh, it's actually stated in the, the next section that we'll go to. Okay. <coughs> any questions? Any comments on that? Okay. So all in favor of the motion is. Is that? Seven. Seven. That's unanimous. So that's on this, just not the final piece. So the next piece is the home occupation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read through these, and uh, we don't have to vote on these individually, but what I would like the board to do is comment on each one of these uh, as to their logic as to why we're using it. And I, I do believe that uh, a very viable argument is the grandfathering uh, and the right. This would be equivalent to the 1992 changes, and maybe before that, several years, each could do what it wanted to do even if it doesn't bother anyone. That's kind of the logic I'm using. Um, but if you challenge my logic, if you disagree with it. Uh, the, <laughs> the occupation of profession, probably especially you, you need to comment if it's, uh, the occupation of profession shall be carried on wholly within the principal front building or within the building accessory there too. So you would be answering that question. So I'll reread it for you, okay? The occupation or profession shall be carried on wholly within the principal building or within the building accessory hereto. These are pretty easy, so okay. yeah. we'll do yeah. that. These are, just didn't want to violate whatever he may have said. The good news about this, the good news about this is yes. Yes. <laughs> right. Okay. Yes. Just answer yes. No. Because these are the rules that you're going to be required to meet until you go to the next step. Yes. Okay. Uh, the home occupation <coughs> shall be clearly incidental and secondary to the use of the dwelling unit for the residential purposes. Yes. And that would be argue, very easily argued, given the fact that you're going to have five people home and so the business is going to be secondary to the fact that that's their primary residence uh, no more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling shall be employed in the home occupation so at this point in time the rule requires that no more than one person uh, who is not a resident be in the dwelling and that doesn't mean that you can't have multiple people but they can come at different times yes it just means that any given time, there would be one person. The exterior signage shall be permitted in accordance with the home occupation sign provisions under section uh, L12, sign regulations subsection E. And I'll challenge this section here saying that this is not relevant based on the fact that it's in high use. So I'd like to have this in our discussion removed from the requirement because that does not apply to this zone. It would reply, so, and this would be replaced by whatever the requirements are for the high gift zone. The signage requirement for high So this would be replaced by the, the high gift requirements. 
So whatever that is, I don't know that we need to look it up at this point. But that would that would be handled by the uh, the CEO at their discretion. Do you feel comfortable with that? Do you feel comfortable with that? Uh, <laughs> stand, sir. No, I do not. Kind of space uh, because is That's okay. he, he's operating, this board's approving it as a home occupation, so he's, he's operating as a home occupation, which is different. The, the sign standards really are standards for businesses that are sort of standalone businesses. It, of course, forward. the nail salon is a business, but it being it is a home occupation, so it needs to follow the home occupation guidelines. Yeah, That's so. I don't. I don't think. To be honest with you, I don't think they're going to really probably put up a sign bigger than what a home occupation would be, anyways. What's the sign is made, Mr. Chair? What's the sign? What's the sign? It's a six. It's six feet, six square feet. So, you, do you foresee putting up a sign bigger than six square feet? Okay, so I don't think it's enough. I don't think it's a point where we have to go down the highest parkway thing. I'm fine with that. So, um, if that's the case, we'll take staff's advice for now on this specific case. Uh, is there a distance from the, distance from the property, if I recall? Or it has to be, or from am me. I incorrect on that? I know you're right. There's a it can be up to section E. I'll dig it up here. So within five feet. So it's got to be within five feet of your right away, and it can be six square feet. Are you good with that? Yes. It's about two by three. To put it in perspective, it's about the size of that picture. There's actually an existing. Uh, you, since you're, you own the property, there's an existing sign, posts and background the sign is gone for the garage but that was presumably what you could reuse for now until yes you're probably just going to reuse the existing sign plate yes we can reuse them yeah, using okay. that sign yes plate. it's already out perfect and that would have been grandfathered so i would use that yes we'll just mention as was just brought to my attention by karen that just so you know before you put anything up you will need to get a sign permit through the code enforcement office mm -hmm. but that's a uh, Easy. Understand that's, that. that's just through the code officer, not these guys. <laughs> not me. Yes. Don't worry. <laughs> we're, the, we're the easy ones. Yeah, not me. <laughs> that's right. Um, let's see. There shall be no exterior display, no exterior storage of materials, no other exterior indication of home occupation or vari variation from the re residential character of the Higgins Parkway. Um, this <laughs> no, no, what I would probably, Mr. Chair, not to get off base on this, but. I just want to make sure that you understand. I think where that's kind of leaning to go is the, I can't remember what you call them, the signs that say nails and stuff that have the big waves on them that people put out at the end of the streets. You wouldn't be able to put one of those out. You mean like the blowing fan thing? No, the, the, the one. Feathers? I think the one like they have at Chicago Dogs. Feathers, feathers, yeah. 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 You wouldn't be able to do that big sign that says nails with the, it's 10 feet tall and has like. There was one though? No, I'm just saying you wouldn't. Well, be able I mean, to do I never that. seen that before. Because so. some salons, some <laughs> salons have those out in front. Oh, okay. It's it's unique for salons, so I just wanted to make sure you knew that you could do one of those. And uh, no nuisance shall be generated, including but not uh, necessarily limited to offensive noise, vibration, smoke, dust, odors, heat, or glare, which I think is the, the business is, is is what it is. The traffic generated by such home occupation shall not include the volume of traffic so as to create a traffic hazard or disturb the residential character of the immediate neighborhood. And so you're going to be understanding all this as we're going through this? <coughs> yes. And, and afterwards, my advice would be to sit down with Karen. Yes. Afterwards, sit down with her, and she'll kind of, if you, uh, she'll help you through the remainder of where you're going from here. Yes. And. Um, uh, the addition of the off-street uh, parking provided to meet the normal requirements of the dwelling, adequate off-street parking shall be provided for the vehicles of each employee and the vehicles of the maximum number of users or customers that the home occupation <coughs> may attract during peak hours. So in other words, you have, you have to make sure you have enough lot so that you can support the cars. That yes. Um, home occupation may utilize not more than 20% of the dwelling unit floor area, provided that the purpose of this calculation on the finished basement and attic spaces are not included. Now, given the fact that we're doing a replacement of an existing 
I believe that does not follow in because we're just we're just exchanging one for another. I believe that to be true as well. And I also see here that Brian Longstaff had some math that he did, and at the end of it, he wrote okay. <laughs> so I, I think not only <laughs> is Brian the is conversion off, from good. one to the other, <laughs> I agree with that line, but I think also the numbers work. So we're two two for two on that one. Okay. <laughs> Make sure not to have Brian and you at Simmers. <laughs> uh, the unfinished, uh, that's all I have that. The uh, occupations may include retail sales subject to the following limitations. So you, you have retail sales, I'm assuming you sell nail polish, nail polish or whatever in your site. Yes. You just can't have too much of it. Yes. <laughs> the, the area that you can have is limited to 400 square feet, which is... You should be packing. Yeah, that's yes. too big. Um, and the sale of the products is limited to products and articles produced, assembled, or processed on the premise and seafood uh, harvest off the premises by persons who reside in the dwelling. Now, that's an interesting one. Products or articles produced, assembled, or processed on the premises. I don't know how to answer that. It doesn't fit. And it wouldn't have fit the automobile either. Because if they bought windshield wipes with fluid, that wouldn't fit. So I think that's under the grandfather. It's not applicable. So I would, I, would, I would argue under that position, that's followed yeah. under the grandfathering of the previous position, which would allow you to do what you wanted to. Yeah, it's a three for three now. Do you agree with that? I'm shaking my head right now. Why? I know. We're um, on a roll. <laughs> 11 is not relevant. <laughs> and uh, 12 is being removed to be... Uh, Actually, it falls in line. Motor vehicle repairs and motor vehicle towing businesses are not allowed as home occupation. So we have eliminated that and put this again. The logic of this is it puts it more in conformance with the zone that is invisible. So, uh, based on that, uh, I want a motion for the board feeling these with those findings of fact meet the requirement just on this section. Before we do that, yes, I just um, wanted to. We're voting for. You told us that you were going to have two employees, so we're voting that there will only be one employee. So you need to really adhere to that, because the town could come in and inspect any time they want. And if they find more than one employee, then you're found in violation. Yes. So that's on 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 site at the time. Right. Yes. And that's that's one that doesn't live there. So you can have if you and your wife and and somebody else as well. Yes. Okay. I just want to be very clear, and you know that you can come back before us under a different... We're expecting a, a second step here. Fully yeah. understand. Okay. So, uh, do I have a motion on that? Move to approve as negotiated throughout the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I think, uh, as for my part of the justification, um, I think that number 12 really is probably one of the biggest thing parts of that, and that is that uh, the vehicle repair is specifically excluded from this area. And so this is eliminating that, that, that one item that is excluded from the, from the Hayes Parkway area and, and replacing it with something that is included. But there's still one right across the street. <laughs> but that's okay, because the goal is to, as we go through, um, one less. Yeah. we'll see one less. And, and the, the job of this board is to try and make things more in conformance, and that would accomplish that. So we let us say I'll second that. Uh, discussion on the motion? All in favor? That's unanimous, okay. So we are done with the, the certain part of this, but now I want to do a final piece uh, for the benefit of the planning board and for legal documentation. So what I'd like each board member to do is to explain their rationale behind, and then we're going to vote on. Uh, let me put the motion on the table first. Uh, I'd like to move that we recognize the ambiguities of the regulations and the circumstances. And the board has decided, based on the help from the CEO's assistant here, which was her title? Senior planner. For now. <laughs> the now, based on the advice of the senior, <laughs> advice of the senior. Planner. We do have the contest tomorrow, so. um, and on the and on uh, the wisdom of the board, that 
uh, it is reasonable to allow, um, based on the variables that we have, being um, that we're we're applying already existing items that were grandfathered. We're applying the rules consistent with the zone if it were in the zone. We're allowing it to then go back for an advisory opinion to the planning board for them to come back to let them come back to, the, to us to open it up for larger uh, support, uh, more people to use. And that would be the goal of the board in this process is to bring that back in that model as opposed to <coughs> putting the burden of a full site plan on you. Um, and so those are the, the that's what the, the, what I believe is the, the logic behind where we're going. And in that form, although messy, our motion would be that that would be uh, on record to document the logic or lack thereof of, don't put that in there. <laughs> um, the logic of uh, this board's decision to move forward as we have. Do you, do we have to put to whatever motion you just did there? Do we have the type of appeal that that would come back before us? Yeah, miscellaneous appeal. Um, if Mr. Williams puts together an application for the non that expansion of the non-conforming use, if he sort of chooses to go down that path and he feels he needs more employees, then yes, that would come back to you and I think uh, basically what Mr. Maroon's motion would be is a sort of an advisory opinion to the planning board as they're making an advisory opinion. Right, we're, we're advising we're, the planning you're board. You're saying that this is the pathway forward. We are looking for. We're looking for, yep. I think that's, that's exactly. But should we have the type of appeal when we're sending our advisory to them, should we tell them what specific appeal we're leaning towards or really. do we need to do that? I, I guess I'm not entirely certain for what the question For coming is. back. Like when we're sending it to the to the planning board. Well, it, 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 it would be sent to the board only if we get an application that requires right. going to them. Yeah. So, so I could add in there that if in fact he does go for a miscellaneous appeal, that the board read our yeah. uh, our findings of fact and conclusions of law, uh, so that they understand that our goal here is to not put him into a situation where he has to go for a full forum uh, process because of the uniqueness of the circumstances, the, um, the uh, disadvantages of, the, the, he did not have anything to do with his own change, neither did the prior applicant. So the, the burden was put on him by the town, by the change of the zone, because it was. Be care careful about that, because he just bought the property. But it's still, it, you know, that's been tested, and that's okay, you can actually use that argument. That's, that uh, yeah, that's been tested. Um, the, the burden goes to the property, not the person that bought it. So we're saying that that being said, we're aligning everything with the fact we're, we're giving the um, we're giving deference to the, the reality of the circumstances and trying to make uh, it as easy as reasonable uh, based on its reality. Now at some point he may decide to tear down the house and build a new building, that's a different conversation. That goes that goes to full site plan review. And so if, if he's doing it, if, if he goes to the whole unit, that changes the model. So we're just talking about as it sits. Um, that's how it would be. But if it leads, if it goes beyond that, and hopefully it will, um, then that goes to the regular process where you'll, you'll be coached through that and go to her immediately. Yes. Okay. So that's in a form of a motion uh, for the board, for the, for the planning board, if it gets there. Is there a second on that? I'll second that. Thank you. Uh, any discussion of the motion? Good motion. I, I, I'd just like to add one comment. Um, certainly not, not changing any of that. I, I would like to say for the record that it's not our intent to try to skirt the way anything is written. And the reason that we came to our decision the way that we did was th the fact that it's very ambiguous in here and it, and it really doesn't spell out what you do in that residential situation in that Hagen Parkway. So it, it seems really like, seem like that we got there in a kind of a roundabout way, but we did that because we were trying to 
trying to kind of weed everything out and make sure that we were making the right decision and, and went back to the right source. And so we're not trying to circumvent the planning board's authority. Correct. That's the last thing we want to, to imply is that we're trying to circumvent the authority, but rather apply the, by the rules provided by the town council over the years to the best of their ability that both the planning board and the zoning board have to use. And that's that's kind of how I see it. Is not uh, there's no usur usurpation usurpation. Mm. We're not trying to we're not trying to, to to manipulate anything. No, I think I think we're just going by the guidelines we're given in the book. We're adhering to what's before us, and even the town struggled with different ways to do this for staff. So mm -hmm. I feel that this has been the big, the best conclusion that we can come up with. We're approving it the way it is now. If it goes to more than one employee, then. We come back and get the advisory from the planning board and go with it from there. Perfect. Oh, could you state your position on the record, too? This is one of those ones that's really important that each board member is on record as to how they feel. For, uh, as it, for, for anybody that doesn't understand the process, and this isn't going to happen, but this is just for reference. The board takes a position, is it 14 days or 30 days? I'm not sure what this board uh, I think it's a person that's come before the board or somebody that wants to challenge the board that's affected by it has 30 days to bring this to Superior Court. Superior Court? Yep. Where the Superior Court will read our findings. They'll determine whether or not our findings were complete, thorough, and did our job right. And what we'll do one of two things. Uphold our position or in essence come back and say, get your acts together, you need to do a better job explaining what you're doing, or overturn it. So uh, that's very expensive, uh, it costs a lot of money, it takes a lot of time, and my goal has always been not to go to court. Because if we do our jobs right, if somebody chooses to take this to court, the, they will read it and say, what do you want from them? They, they've covered, they, they've done their job explaining what they're doing and what their motives are. They can't challenge our motives or our logic or our process. They can challenge us not being complete in the process, not answering the questions that need to be answered. So those are the things that have to be done and why it's so important that we state our positions on record because the, the, the record is, is the written document that ends up going to court. So my position on the matter. Um, <laughs> In, in, in regards to this, um, as it was stated, due to the fact of the uniqueness of the grandfathered property or the grandfathered home business beforehand, the fact that it's in the Hagas Parkway zone, um, I, I feel that we are in the best. We are working in the best interest of the applicant in this case, um, because Scarborough wants to welcome businesses to thrive and to come here. Um, uh, Try not to put any hindrances or uh, any additional barriers or challenges in their way. I believe this is our best option. Would you, uh, just to kind of clarify that, you're not trying to circumvent our standard rules, though. Correct. To make it easy for the applicant. Yes. You're just trying to apply the applicant's reasonable rules. The rules, as you see reasonable, not for the benefit of the applicant necessarily, but it happens to benefit the applicant. Yes, exactly. That's okay. yes. Thank you. Are you update? Um, I think there's so many different ways that that we can take a look at this. Another one just came across my mind. Fifteen, <laughs> <laughs> bring it up. It's, it's, I mean, it's if we take it, if we take it. Strictly from a home occupation point of view, and the guy has a residence, um, regardless of what the, the district is, uh, I think this is cut and dry that, that we would convert it. I, I would know. If this was in the right zone, I would. Yeah, yeah. Um, that being said, we know that the residence is not in the residence. So now, is it really is it really a home occupation? It doesn't really make any difference. <coughs> the occupation 
is now an allowable occupation for a business in, in the zone that the home is in. And that's grandfathered. So, uh, well, I'm not concerned with doing the right thing. It's hard not to factor in the zone that you're in now. Um, you're saying the Haggis Parkway zone ordinance doesn't address the fact of home occupations or excuse me grandfathered in residences so there's nothing addressing what he wants to do today it's my it understanding does, it does allow for grandfathering of existing uses right its goal is to eliminate them but it does allow it they can't make them tear down the house so in that sense okay. the house is a right to be there um, the long-term goal comes back to all businesses of that nature. Because so, I'm, you know, I'm not a seasoned member. I don't know the ordinances as, on, as well. I think it's unfortunate uh, that. You're great. You're I great. think it's unfortunate that we can't factor in the fact of where the zone he's in and let him have two employees. Um, you know, I think so. I strongly want to be able to let this and open his business and get started and fully function in the way he business plan is laid out. Um, I would have to be a variance request and then you'd have to go through the variance. You'd have to be another application. Okay. I think again, I'd love to be able to do that. I mean, that's the frustrating part. And this is where the emotional side comes in and, and uh, the black and white comes in. We just, I agree with you. I think we all do. Anything else you want to add? Okay. Any other discussion before we vote? <laughs> all in favor of approval? That's unanimous. Congratulations. You can have Thank one you. employee. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would. I would just reiterate. No, make this so we've we've reiterated it many times, but. Businesses that are coming to Scarborough as a new business, it really behooves you to seek out the Council of Setco and work with them because they can make the process a lot easier on you and give you a lot more guidance. But I can't change any rules. Just no, but <laughs> just they, you can at least guide people down right. some paths that they need to go. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Up. This was a business. Right. And I really need you to talk to her after yes. this. Yes. 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 Very, very important. The decision would have been made. <laughs> On the second date. Maybe, maybe you could do a nail. Maybe you could do a nail score. Who in the world is going to sue it? Who in the world is going to ever listen to it? That's kind of how I feel. Like, who's going to try? He's hanging around with rich, rich people. I mean, his pen's better than that. And yet here we sit. We do have to start the new appeals before 10 30 this year. No, I didn't know where you were going with that last one. So. <laughs> I didn't either. We didn't either. That's why I came in a little startled. I said, how do I do it? Okay, so the final appeal, right? Uh, Dan DaCosta, 146 Gorham Road in Scarborough, uh, looking to build, is that where you? If the, if the chair will allow me, I could maybe summarize the uh, project for you. Is this what you were here for tonight? 
That's what I was here for tonight. Okay. <laughs> this one I know. <laughs> Working overtime. Now, to give you an idea of just, just kind of, again, so some, some background input. Uh, Karen's in my building. We see each other regularly. She did not come to talk about this at all because of her ethics and her standards of saying, I don't want to influence the board in any way. And she had plenty of opportunity to do that. And I actually told her to. <laughs> and she still would. So, I mean, I, I think that speaks volumes of how Karen does business and how SEDCO does business is that goal is to do it right by the book. And uh, I commend you for that. If you would allow me, I, I can walk you through some of the information and tell you a little bit more about this uh, project that uh, some of which information may not be in your packet, but if I could clarify a couple of things. This is a request for a home uh, occupation, approval for a home occupation. Uh, Mr. DaCosta here owns Lily's Limousine, which has been a family owned and operated business um, that provides car services for people, really often for special occasions and um, weddings, proms, corporate events, but also airport transportation. Um, this company has been a longtime Scarborough company. They've been here um, doing business. I believe they've been in business since about 1988. So Dan recently purchased a home located at Map R54, Lot 16, 146 Gorham Road. And just to orient you, this lot is located, it's in the R4 Village Residential, and it's surrounded by Lot 18, which is um, CASA, the CASA facility. And so wrapped around on either side, um, one to one side is the entrance to CASA, and to the other is just another strip of the CASA property. So he is surrounded by um, that facility. And below that is where the, the gentleman that does a lot of the coyote hunting is that, is that right? He's right on. He's right oh, on 146. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
it, it's a gray, I hate to bring up a gray area for you, but. Oh, um, <laughs> so he doesn't have employees that will be working on site. He does have um, employees who will come pick up the car and leave to go deliver, obviously, the service um, you know, to individuals. So um, again, they will come in, leave their car, plenty of room on the site for um, an employee to park their car, and um, they'll pick up the vehicle. There won't be any customers coming to the site, um, so he doesn't have a, a need for signage um, and no need for parking for any type of um, customers. So other than the office, the, like I said, the only activity is the moving of the vehicle in and out of the garage. So we don't anticipate any real nuisances with respect to noise, vibration, dust, any of that. Uh, we don't anticipate it. And he does have some buffering, obviously, between him and the other neighbors simply because of the way this property sits. So the home occupation, clearly, it's going to generate some uh, trips from the vehicles that are taken in and out of the residential lot. Um, many of the trips, though, would be generated off-peak, so you wouldn't be um, necessarily having limousines coming in and out during the peak hours. Um, let's see. And all the parking by the homeowners are going to be in front, so the homeowners, meaning Dan and his wife, will park in the garage that's attached to the house. Uh, so no on-street parking would be required. Um, again, we, I think we mentioned this home occupation, the office part, will be about 200 square feet. Um, if you count the living area of the house itself, uh, which is about 1,500 square feet, that represents about 13.5% of the living area that would be devoted to the office. So clearly he's meeting the 20% uh, standard for using of the, the dwelling unit floor area. Um, he doesn't have any retail sales. There's, again, no customers are coming um, to the site. Um, all customer contact is through the web or through phones. Um, he doesn't plan on doing, there's no repairs that are done there. They're done off-site at... Mechanics or dealers. Right, right. And um, it's obviously, it's not a towing business. But what about cleaning? Cleaning is done on-site. They're luxury vehicles, so we detail them every day. Uh, so constant detailing means the next time you do it is a very quick 10-minute thing by the driver who's already bringing it back. What about washing? Oh, uh, depends on, it depends on how busy it is. A lot of times we'll use the car wash. In, in Maine, we have to use the car wash about six months out of the year um, because, of the, because the water freezes. Otherwise, I do it myself. Right now, I have to bring it to the car wash. Let's come back to that, but that's something that's a, that I think is of interest to deal with because there is a right there too. Right. Um, so I think the you know the the additional question is again he does plan to build a garage that will be in the back of the property so it won't be seen from the street and it won't be seen um, really from uh, the front of the house. Um, that is those plans are not. Um, I don't think not at yet all. To, no. Um, um, draw those up. Um, but again. Are we, are we talking about with these, these designs, no lesser standards and things? Those, uh, those I put in there to give you an idea of what I envision a residential looking garage to be, even though the garage will be bigger than those. The reason I ask the question is because uh, number one, four doors is hard to make it look residential. But these designs imply a certain level of architectural design as opposed to, uh, you know, when you're buying a... It'll be very much not an industrial looking or a steel fabricated building. It will be... To these standards? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think we can... We're happy to... Why don't we just jump... Yeah, happy to answer questions now, or... Why don't we jump into the board table, jump right into the... I think you answered most of them anyway. So we'll go right through them again. Could we I'd like to ask a question. Sure, feel free. Uh, where's the business located now? Right now, that's where I do my, my office is in there now. And all I do is my computer work and phones and 
I answer the phones on my cell phone, which I have for 13 years that I've owned it. Uh, do, no matter where I am, that's where I answer it. Just add a computer and do everything through email and, and that type of stuff, answer the phone. The cars are scattered right now, which is a first for me. Usually they're wherever my business has been. Um, and they're at driver's houses. I've got three cars in Buxton, so when I have to go wash a car, I have to go to Buxton to do them, or I have drivers do them for me. And, you know, a little bit, often I'm trying to, fit that, trying to think about where my cars are right now and who's got what and make sure that logistically it'll work for business. And it's, it's interesting. But that's where, I've, that's where I've decided to keep it until I know what my next step is going to be. How many vehicles do you have? Uh, right now I have seven. Our average uh, in the last 13 years has been seven or eight. Now when you say seven, how many are uh, like sedans versus? Three, versus? Uh, two of them are stretch limousines. The largest stretch limousine is 38 feet long, which is why my garage plan is about 40 to 50 feet deep. Because when I, when I get something that deep, I can also <coughs> double park sedans in other bays. In fact, I can save money on the size of the garage by buying lifts, which I've researched quite a bit of. I've seen other companies in other states that have these lifts. And so in a, say, 45-foot deep bay, I can actually put four sedans in there, two and then two stacked. So are you planning on having a garage large enough to store all your vehicles? Yes, yes. My, my, my hope is a four-bay garage 45 to 50 feet deep. And how many drivers do you employ? I, my average in the last 14 years has been about 10 drivers. 10 drivers? Yep. And yet in your application, you basically said there's never any more than two drivers a day. We also have an average of two jobs a day um, over the course of a year. And they're rarely there at the same time. Some exceptions on a Saturday here and there. We're a seasonal business also. Um, I don't do anything else in the off season. We are busy enough for that. But our average is still about two to three jobs a day. And, and in a course of 24 hours, rarely are they there at the same time. And if they are, they're only there for five minutes. How high is this planned garage? Because obviously you're talking about stacking, so you're talking about going much higher than a normal garage. Um, my current garage that is attached, I could put one of those in there if I wanted to. It's a little bit higher than normal. The garage, um, I don't know the height of it, but the garage doors, when the previous owners put them, had to put a, another panel on them to cover the, cover the, uh, the opening to close the door. Um, and that... I think looks fairly residential, even though it's you know it's only a two-car garage. It just happens to be a little bit higher. My vehicles themselves don't have above-average height. But how high are you thinking? Uh, I'm I'm honestly horrible at that estimating. Um, but you know, if, if you put a standard, I, I would say you know something a little bit less than this. It's I'm just picturing the garage that's attached now, and it's it's a little bit higher than normal. I couldn't tell you what the, you, you wouldn't know it from the outside because of the peak. I believe the max building height in the VR4 is 35 feet. I'll confirm that here. For That's you. why I was just asking if I knew there was a height. Just a moment. So you can just uh, switch as a parent straight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't make it any higher than the one I have. Yep, maximum building height, 35 feet. So you would be fine with that requirement? Yeah, that is an outside height. Yeah, that would yes, be so a, yeah. the roof. That yeah. would be the top. Okay. <clears throat> is, is the garage area part of the business? It's part of the business, right? The garage is the... Well, that no, it's separate. Right, that's the, that's the question because the... <coughs> the business is not necessarily taking place in the garage. Oh, it's a on, storage. I know. No, I, no, 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 no. I'm just, the that's business. the question. It's part of the business. What? The garage. Right now, well, it's, right now it's not. Right now it's not. The it's office not. is in your home right so now. Yeah, it's just a desk. What you're saying basically is that's the, excess, the accessory space is business. building it for the business, right. correct? I mean, the store and the business. 
I'm not sure what that means. I think it's just a fair statement. I can't. It's a warehouse. This board is just happens to be cars as opposed to cans of soup. No more than two employees. Huh? Space within an accessory building totaling not more than 1,000 square feet of floor area. So I think that's where uh, Mr. Longstaff's memo was. One of the comments was sort of directing the board to vet this question out, and it sounds like Mr. Blaze has his thoughts on it, and that's where we'll be more direction. Is that a is that a home occupancy point, or is that a building? Okay, so if I if I didn't have a business and wanted to build a barn, it wouldn't matter. If I if be just just because of the home occupancy part. As bizarre as that sounds, yeah. We're getting them tonight. <laughs> okay, I, again, I'm going to ask the board to give, to give you a little bit of time to, to kind of digest some things. Um, the village development standards. It does get back. I mean, Brian and I have ta talked about this at some length, and it, it really is a board question. You know, do you treat this? Um, I'm not sure how you've treated caterers before, because the caterer has the truck, and if the where the truck is parked, if that's considered part of the business, <coughs> then yes, indeed, you would apply that same standard. If you haven't traditionally included the garage or wherever you've parked the catering trucks, for instance, you know, that's the gray area of what's considered outdoor storage versus the actual activity of the business. But this really is the activity of the business. The limousines the limousine are, service. Yeah. The limousines is, that's a source of income. Right. A delivery truck is not the source of income. Well, the product that's in the delivery truck is the source of income. Right. Although <coughs> they're a service, so it's the service that they deliver outside, you know, picking up people. That the the trip around taking people around is the is the actual business and product. I know it's it's fuzzy. But I also I'm looking at a different a different issue here. Yep. So if you okay. mind. sure, sure. Uh, so the, the uh, home occupation standards, the performance standard uh, one, the uh, the occupation or profession shall be carried on wholly or within the wholly uh, within the principal building or with any building accessory thereto. Two, the home occupation shall be clearly incidental and secondary to the use of, of the dwelling unit as for residential purposes. And I don't know if it meets that standard alone right there, uh, because it's, it seems to me that while you're being living in the residence, it seems that this is a pretty big expansion of a business. Uh, 
you know it may so but we need to talk through that three no more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling unit shall be employed in the home occupation and it sounds like sounds like there's a possibility there would be more than one on the property at the same time but maybe not so I, again we, right. there are things that we need to talk through they, they would have to uh, be in that same five to ten minutes that the switch over takes place okay uh, the signage part doesn't uh, apply Five, there shall be no exterior display, uh, no exterior storage of materials, and no other exterior indication of the home occupation or variation from the resident ca residential character of the principal building, except as expressly permitted by the district re uh, regulations of this ordinance. This prohibition shall not apply to the storage of lots of trash. Um, I guess if it's well hidden back there, maybe you wouldn't see that. Well, I, where do you plan? Are you planning to go through the um, from that that concrete foundation between the concrete foundation <coughs> and, the, and the main building? Is that your plan of entry? Where do you mean to the right of the building? How are you going to access the garage? Like from the garage out onto Gorham Road? Where's the driveway for that going to go? Well, I have room to the right of the home. Of the home, I, I also have an option and there's a house across the street that does this and I know that I know they're not a business but uh, I would love to access it through front and back doors of the existing garage because <clears throat> I can clean I can vacuum the cars right there and send them out and get to the back right through the right through the garage okay well that might be a good option because it seems to me that otherwise you may need another curb cut to get over around to that right side of the home yeah See the curb cut is happening. Curb cut. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no nuisance shall be generated, including but not necessarily limited to the offensive noises, vibration, smoke, dust, odors, heat, flare. I don't see that as being an issue. The traffic generated by such home occupation shall not increase the volume of traffic so as to create a traffic hazard or disturb the residential character of the immediate neighborhood. And again, a, a vehicle coming and going occasionally, I don't think that that's a real issue. In addition to the off-street parking provided to meet the normal requirements, the dwelling adequate off-street parking shall be, and you say you've got plenty of parking in the back for employees. Um, so again, that's probably not one that's an issue either. It's just more of those earlier ones. The home occupation may utilize a not more than 20% of the dwelling unit floor area, provided that uh, provided that for the purposes of this calculation, unfinished basement and attic spaces are not included. That's going to be a tough one because 20% of the of the space and now you now you're adding all this additional space. I, I think you're going to be well over 20%. Unfinished attic space within an arcade. Um, space within an accessory building totaling not more than 1,000 square feet of floor space. This is clearly an accessory building. Ten, the home occupation may include retail sales subject or you won't have retail sales there uh, and the other two the other, the others don't apply either so boy there's there's a few of them here that are going to be tough hurdles for us to get over The one I would grapple with the hardest is the uh, 9C, the space within an accessory building totaling not more than 1,000 square feet. That's the hard one, is the one you're proposing. 50 by 40 is 2,000. That's a tough one. The previous zone was R4, and so I'm, I'm looking at that to see if there's any room there. But it's actually more restrictive. I, I, here's my struggle. This is not my call, so it's a little bit different than the other one. Um, we've got a zone that, the VR zone that's on a major road. It doesn't describe, if you read the VR description, it doesn't even come close to describing what that road is. Yeah. And, and, and let me just so I put it on the record, I'll read it. This is what the VR4 zone 
purpose is. <coughs> this is why when people ask us how we get to where we get or whatever we do, or this is our this is kind of the challenge is to provide residential neighborhoods of a higher density a, to a manner which will promote a wholesome living environment and accept a significant share of the town's residential growth. To this end, residential development shall not exceed four dwelling units per net residential acre plus additional density through development transfer or affordable housing. The village residential development standards are intended to promote the establishment of neighborhoods with a mix of dwelling types, accommodating a mix of house, households, age groups, and income levels, incorporate uh, communal recreation areas, greens, commons, and open mm -hmm. spaces, and create a village-style development pattern with an interconnected network of landscaped streets, blocks, and pedestrian ways in a manner that complements adjacent residential neighborhoods and commercial districts to instill a mix of housing types and land uses in and around our town and village centers. All developments in the VR4 district shall be serviced by public sewer and civil law. That is the last thing 202 is, or 114. And what is confusing to me about this is this was written after, this was put in place in 09. When did the cost of the land? Their approval within the last, within the last three or four years. Um, oh, oh, originally? Yeah. I'm yeah, sorry. Originally. I, boy, I don't know. Originally, it's, it was before '09, I would think. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Originally, it was. Yeah, it was like 1990 something, I think. I yeah. believe when they did their. <laughs> so Casa doesn't even fit in the sum, yet they just approved an expansion. I think they came through as a uh, expansion of a non-conforming use, if I remember right. I know they came to the planning board. I think yeah. they came. struggling with is what this is another one what do you got and I'm not sure we get the same room to move as the last one but I'm trying to figure out what <coughs> what is the house was currently what? What, what what was the house prior to you taking it prior to we moved in as into an abandoned home and it was flooded, it was destroyed, seven feet of water in the basement. We rebuilt it entirely, and I don't know who it was that abandoned it before, but it was abandoned for six months. And do we know what was there before Cahill? Is it to check records on that? What was it that that was approved for? It was a roofing company, and I only know that because there's their signs in the attic of the garage. I can look in the code file. Probably why they had to have the lodge of doors. What's that? Probably why they had to have the doors. Yeah, they were like trucks. Yeah, I think so. I'd like to take a 10 minute recess if the board's okay with that so that we can get some information on what was previously there. I think that's relevant. Uh, what was previously there and maybe even some old provision back picture that we did last time. Because I don't know if it was there. And the other question is was it vacant for more than a year? Because then that wouldn't matter. It would override. That. You said you said it wasn't May. Year, right? CMP shut the power off in May of fifteen. Scarborough sh Scarborough said that it was considered abandoned in May of fifteen. They power would make the decision. When did you buy it? We bought it in February of sixteen. Okay, so it's within the year. So it didn't, doesn't lose its grandfathering if there's any grandfathering. Well, it was a single family home. Right. So single family homes are allowed in the VR. I guess my question is, though, it sounds like it was a business out of a single-family home. There was a roofing company that was working on it. Yeah. There's, there's another company just like it that's next door to us, too, but I don't know if they've got two or three trucks. So what issue number one? Yeah, no, no. So, yeah, I wasn't aware that there was a business in there. I thought it was just some... Yeah. It's it, it, so a business of record. So, <laughs> well, that's the question. Is it, a big, is it a business of record? I don't know. Did they get a permit? Was it... <laughs> <coughs> uh, you know, with tacitly approved, what what was there? Can, can you? Yeah. I'm 
trying mm -hmm. to do. Yeah, the, the going back, yep. but um, and I'm going to use the restroom and I'll be right back. So we've got a feel like it's coming back at uh, say uh, twelve of uh, ten, <laughs> ten of ten of ten. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Actually, could you explain what you found? Okay, we're re in session. Yes. Yeah, we never went out of session, so I said anything rude here on tape for history. Okay. There's only one you left. <laughs> <laughs> um, signature roofing, when I looked it up on Manta, it comes up as 146 Gorham Road, Scarborough, Maine. And it says roof and chimney repair, quality roofing repair, 30 years of experience. Uh, more details about the business. Categorized under roofing, siding, and sheet metal work. Our record show was established in 2007 and incorporated in Maine. Current estimates show the company has an annual revenue of 70,000 and employs a staff of approximately 10. Ooh. Owner Jerry Reynolds is what it says, partner. <coughs> but it was established in 2007. Uh, in the Google pictures, did you see any vehicle storage here? So let me throw a thought out at people. They do, Mr. Chair, they do also have an NAICS code and an SIC code, so they were definitely recognized. Just not by the town. Yeah. Right, just not by the town. Just recognized by all the other entities. Um, so here's my thought. These are really two separate issues. One is can you run an in-home occupation? That seems pretty straightforward meets the requirements of an in home occupation. Nobody but an in-home, 400 square feet, blah, blah, blah. Ooh, ooh. Mm. I don't agree with that. I'm not talking about the business. I'm talking about just him working out of his house. You're, you're talking just the office, not the new garage. I'm talking about just the true definition. There are two different issues. We get two different, I see this as two different issues. We've got an in-home occupation, and then we've got whatever this is over here. <coughs> but the in-home occupation. The vehicles, What's correct? Yes. that? Meaning the vehicles. Yeah, say for instance he was parking the vehicles down the street. Does he have the right to have that in home occupation? Does it fit the requirement? It does. I would say yes, it does. If those, biz if those vehicles weren't there. <coughs> I don't know if it's on topic, but I'm having a hard time believing you have 10 employees and seven cars, and there's at one time there's no, I mean, you don't have staff meetings. But, but I want to keep it separate. Okay. And I'll, I'll walk That's you through why, because I don't, I think we're going to have to. My opinion is we're going to have to table part of this, but approve part of this. And the logic is this. The, the request is for an in-home business. Whether or not that allows for the storage, I think probably is my overriding view, probably not. It requires a different appeal, either a variance appeal or something other than a special exception. Special exception applies to whether or not you can have an in home business. And the in home business says you can have it if you don't use so many square feet. And <coughs> what's frustrating is because that last business wasn't documented by going through the right process and nobody ever stopped it, um, there's no history. So, what I want to do is I want to, number one, set the stage for what we have, which he's working out of his home. He, technically, by town standards, illegally, right now because you have to be approved to do it. He came to the town like he should have, and like the previous tenant should have, but they didn't. So he's following the rules as far as an in-home occupation. And that 
to me is the first piece. That doesn't talk about the vehicles at all. The vehicles could be in Vietnam. But the bottom line is he can run it. I want to be able to establish that he's doing it in all business. And I honestly think we need to break this in two. There is a term for it in uh, Robert's Rules of Order. I forget it. I fear it. What is it? I fear it. I can't pronounce it. <laughs> you want to bifurcate into two? I want to bifurcate it. I'd like to bifurcate this. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> in my opinion, we're bifurcating <coughs> by this. Um, we had to read about your <laughs> Um <laughs> So, if the, if the applicant is comfortable, my advice would be that we break this into two pieces and that the applicant requests this to be broken into two pieces and go back to SEDCO and sit down and deal with the town and SEDCO regarding what we've got, whatever that is, with the vehicle, but get you legal and recognized in the town as an in-home occupation. So that's what I'm suggesting to the board. I, I, don't, I don't know if it matters, but I don't have any, any, intent, any uh, interest in doing business there without the cars. I want to be, I want to be where the cars are. Okay. So then, then it doesn't really matter whether you get that right. or not. Okay. But you aren't doing business out of there now? You're, you're not uh, using that as your office to schedule? The only thing I'm doing is, is my phone calls and stuff there. No drivers are ever coming in. I mean, there's nothing going on there. It's like staff meetings or none of that. I mean, it, it is my home. It's not a large home. You know, I've, I've got four kids, but two of them are leaving, so we're right there. No drivers are going to come in there. You're essentially running the business out of there. I'm just, yeah, I'm basically, yeah, I'm just answering the phones and stuff like that. But that's not my, right now, everything is, every, everything is pending. You know what I mean? So wherever I end up is where my office will also end up. And How do the drivers get their trip sheets? Everything is electronic. Everything is done by apps. Some drivers I don't even see two or three months, especially if they have my cars. I, I, so they show up at your garage and they already no, have they, the sheet? No, they sh they don't, everything's on their phones. It's all, it's all digital. And they, if, if the car is at their house, I never even see them. I just trust that they're in their uniform. They get in their car, go do their job. And if, if they've agreed to keep the car for me while I try to figure this out, then they're also cleaning it, the car. They're doing everything. To, it's a benefit to them, too, because they don't have to travel to wherever the office is. I, I highly recommend Yes. Yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyways, back to the point at hand. I don't want to belabor this. If there's no benefit to you to have the in-home occupation dealt with, <coughs> then we're really looking at the whole form. And we can go through the criteria if you'd like. It's up to you. If we go through the criteria and we deny it, you can't come back with anything similar for one year. Um, you can withdraw and then regroup or ask for a table. That's your call. We can't make that call. We could ask for more information, but I'm not sure what we'd ask for. Um, so you're saying the garage plan as it is is not possible? I, I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm saying that based on what I am reading and I'm speaking to the board, the board needs to speak for themselves. I'm just, the, I'm just from doing this long enough. I believe that the board, based on the reality, has no choice but to say no. And based on that, I would not advise you to have us vote because it locks you down for one year. You can't come back with a similar appeal for one year. And there may be a way around it, but I don't know what. That's not, my, that's not what we do. But that's what the town does, and that's what SEDCO does. So by not locking, if you, if you carry this to the next step, which is going through the process and voting, the door's locked. <coughs> Boy, right. Why lock the door? And the problem is with us going through the questions, we can get, I don't know how many of the questions we had out of the two, <coughs> 16 out of 17, but if we can't agree on that one, that denies the whole thing. And there's probably about three or four that are really tight to try to get around right now. Mm -hmm. So I think it requires more information and 
I mean, I'm not telling you it wouldn't be approved tonight. You know, it could be. And that's that's a gamble you can take. I, I, I have my concerns. I mean, you can see what I asked for a reason for a reason. If, if the garage is considered, you know, if the storage of the vehicles is considered part of the business, then I don't see a path to approval on that. Um, we haven't worked through that. Right. But I think that's the real but that's the real crux of the issue. I, I don't think we've worked through it, but I'm not sure that there's enough information that's been provided to give us guidance mm -hmm. with it. And so I can't tell you what to do, but we can either go forward or not. And what would you like to do? I, I, I think as a home occupation, I see four issues here. And like the chairman says, there, there may be another avenue to get this done, but as home occupation, It's, and again, we haven't voted, and we haven't gone through the criteria, nope. and we haven't done any of that. <clears throat> but if we vote on it, once we start the process, we start the process, and we really do need to make a decision on it. If you'd like to table it for the next meeting, you can always cancel. If you decide you want to cancel, you can do that. If you'd like to buy a picture of your table, <laughs> we could separate it into two pieces, vote on one piece, leave the other aside. If you want us to vote, we can go through the entire process and vote. It's your, it's your call. Now, if you're planning, and this probably doesn't make any difference because of the size of the garage, his plan was to go inside the garage and use one of the bays of the garage to get to and from, get his vehicles into the next garage. Even if he had like a, I don't know, like a, attachment or something like that between the two that's still not going to work because it's still going to be more square footage than so it's again at this point whether I mean, it's attached I, I, really don't want down down. <coughs> I, I don't want to get around any further here what would you like to do is does any of this have to do with how late it is i mean i don't want to either no, no. but yeah. the last thing no, no, we've, we've been done we've gone to you know it's we've been here to one point yeah i can't tell you what to do but you we never decide it based upon time right we give you the option of what what was your thinking when you started talking about the fact that it's on a main road well it, it doesn't matter what i think it's what the rules are right. um the, the dilemma we've got is we try to be fair to people we cannot tell you whether we're going to vote no or yes because we haven't gone through the process and that wouldn't be a fair thing to do we'll stay at midnight it doesn't bother me but i've got my concerns and i'm probably the most willing to bend of anybody here and I'm worried. So you can you've got control for a very short period of time here because we've got to make a decision. Um, if the realities of this is we can table it to, a, to a, another date, you'd be the first on the agenda. So that wouldn't be the time issue. And it would be the next month. You could taper it to two months or whatever you wanted. You can table it because you want to put together your argument in a different manner. Or you can have us continue with the process and we'll vote and it'll either be approved or declined. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Brian's comments or notes was he had kind of made a comment or circled on the square footage, right? Because he was concerned about that as well. Um, Brian. In terms of what Brian was looking at was the square footage in terms of overall lot coverage, which is a zoning requirement, which you're allowed to up to 40% building coverage, and they're only at about 14 or 15% with the garage. The, the square footage issue has to do with the home occupation, and that's where Brian's comment sort of suggested, is the garage part and parcel of the home occupation, or is the garage considered a, an accessory use um, to the residence? And that was sort of the, the question and direction. That was the question that Ms. Brian Moss asked Memo, I think the direction that Ms. Martin has put forth um, for consideration. And, but so if the board feels that <coughs> the garage is part and parcel of the home occupation, it's too big. You can't meet that standard. You know, 1,000 square feet in an accessory unit end of that. If the board sort of follows the pathway of 
it's an accessory unit or an accessory structure to the uh, dwelling, then you can sort of deal with it in the, in the framework that uh, has been put forth by the applicant, the representative. <laughs> there may be legal precedent too. I, I'll be candid with you. I don't think I think this is one of those ones you need an attorney. I I don't think you've got. And again, I'm, I'm, this is where I get. We've got. We've got. Our job is to make a decision. So I guess I'll ask you right now: Do you want us to continue or not? What are we going to do? I would go to the table after that. But I, I, I sense urgency. So on your on your behalf. No. Okay. No. So I I'll, I I feel rushed. So we'll table it. So you're, you're requesting a table at this yeah. point. All right, so uh, all in favor of allowing the table to the next meeting, the first. Allow us to do that at the same table. Yeah. Do, you want, do, you do, next door do you want two months or you want one month? You can table, actually, table. You can <laughs> I don't think we need to decide. Just you know what we can do is you can table to next month, and if you want to table it out again, you can. So can I, 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 oh, sure. yeah. The deadline for next month's agenda is the 20th of this month, which is a week from today. I just want it doesn't cost you any more money. You're going to be first on the agenda. That this the paperwork would need to be in then. Okay. I don't know. That's the problem. Yeah. So the question then is, can you get your ducks in a row in that short time right. frame? That's would it be better question. off? I'd give it two if I were you, Mr. Chair. I just want to get this out there, and maybe I'm out of place in saying it. I just the, the applicant said they felt rushed. I just wanted to have him give us his perspective on that. I'm hoping he doesn't perceive that we're trying to Thank you. force him into this decision by making him feel rushed. If you feel rushed. I, I don't have anything necessarily to add to change that, but I definitely feel rushed. Uh, and I totally agree. I don't want to be here any longer either. Oh, it's got nothing. The last thing. I understand. I understand that's how it feels. I'm not sure that, that anything would change how that feels. Um, I think you're, you're sensing is people who would really like to help you, but can't are uh, worried about being able to. Yeah. I think we don't, Yeah. if I may comment, I mm -hmm. think what we're trying to do is stop ourselves before we start the process and give you an unfavorable possibly decision. It's not, it's not so much rushed, I think, as much yeah. as it is us trying <coughs> to vet this a little bit mm -hmm. and see if we can really honestly feel, and sometimes what the chair will do is go around and just get a general opinion, do you think we're going to be able to get by all these? And I'm probably the toughest one on that. We can do that now. If and we I, I don't think that we could get by on all of them. It's not, I, I, I don't want you to feel rushed. It's more that we're Time's trying to help you and yeah. not crimp you. Because right. once we go down that road and we deny it, the you've lock got that for lock year. for a yeah. year. And we're just trying to help you. I understand you'd like to get this going sooner and get everything done. Yeah, I'm, I'm not as worried as much about that as, I mean, I felt like, I felt like you were in the middle of sentences and then stopped yourself to say make a decision. That's well, why I felt the problem right. is we we can't tell you what to do. And, and it's a fine <clears> line <throat> and I'm walk I probably stepped over it a long way. But there's a fine line as to what we we can't tell you to table this. If you want to right, take right. forward, you have every right to do that. Right. And and you know, it's fine. You'll follow our post. And if it takes four hours, it takes four hours. That's okay. I'm, we, I think the latest is one. Uh, I, think like one I think the park was like two. Was the park was two or two thirty. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. time is the issue. The issue is, and, and if you're sensing stress with me, I can tell you right now that I would be voting no based on the facts I have. So I think that's the criti the critical issue. I think uh, in terms of guidance for for the applicant is um, getting that sense of. Um, People really do believe that the garage is an integral part of the business and it's not considered separate as outdoor storage. And if that is, if that's, if that's the pleasure of the board, then that guides him in terms of whether he comes back with more information on that issue or a different approach to doing the business there. We haven't worked through that, so we can't say that's what the issue is because none of us have talked about it. But I think granularly, it doesn't fit very nice. So just, just a touch, as you see it right now, how do you feel? For me? Yeah. Um, looking 
at it over here, it's a thousand square foot limit. The dimensions on the drawing is two thousand square foot. Right. It's very black and white what it states in here. Um, and as, as far as uh, we don't mean give any appearance of being rushed at all, there just may be other avenues. I think he was looking for a yes or no from you as to whether. Oh, uh, so I would vote. At this, at the way it currently stands now, uh, I would vote no. Thanks. I'll be very brief for mine. I would, for the same reasons and maybe a couple others, I would be a no. Would I be the same? Yes. One more, and that would pretty much do it. <laughs> I worked for a limousine company for probably 12 or 15 years. <laughs> he doesn't remember. No. No, it's a waste. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit bigger than uh, this one. This one is seven cars. I think that's the one that I worked for. Started out at maybe twelve and grew. Um, but there was always people around. Always. Drivers were. Uh, maybe things changed with cell phones and everything like that. But drivers were always. <laughs> It's just not. I mean, before you telephones. You come back, <laughs> and you come back at 1 o'clock in the morning, and you're going to pack in your cars. You know, I don't know whether you're doing this all inside or not. But, uh, we never do it inside. I would remember a little room to park in if everything was packed. Um, this a limousine business is not a home occupation. <coughs> Every driver of the company. No more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling unit shall be employed by the home occupation. I'll never approve this. No, I, I just want to set the record straight on that. Right. You haven't heard all the, the arguments and all the positions on it, so I would prefer that you'll keep an open mind, and I'm yeah. sure you will. But I think you're getting my sense of concern. Jill Bland? I mean, I think everyone has relayed kind of our concerns here, and I think it bottoms down to this doesn't really fit into the home occupation. And I think what Chairman Maroon here is trying to do is say maybe there's a different avenue to do this. Because, I mean, you are right next to a very large business um, and other businesses. So who says you can't do it? Just maybe not this way. Okay, maybe another one. Okay. Maybe you can investigate what CASA has done. And then, so, I feel a little bit too long. Right. I um, don't want to speak for the applicant, but I think tabling is the right um, avenue for right now. Um, although I, I that, think tabling is the right answer yeah. for right now. But I want to make sure I need, I need you on record with this. I don't, I need to know that you are wanting to table this because you're going to get or you're going to attempt to get better information to sway us as opposed to feeling like you're being pushed yes. to, to get yeah. out. I, I mean, that, that was a completely unfair um, vision of my company, you know, and I guess that would have been better said if we had gone forward and done the arguments, uh, but that's, that's why I'm going to table it. I think you got a very fair, th th this board tries to I'm just talking about his his version of the limousine company. But my, my question for you, though, is I don't want you to table it for any other reason than because you feel that you need to get better information to us so that we, to, to benefit you, not because you feel rushed. He's only one vote. So he's only one person, one vote. He may not even be here next, next, next time. Um, and maybe I'll fish in. Whatever. So the point being, the reason you're doing this needs to be for a specific reason tied to information. That's the only way you can table something in this process. Yeah. So as long as you're comfortable, can you, and I need that to come out yes. on Yes, I need to get more information. And I think you've got a very good 
person working for you uh, knows I'm, a lot of the ways to. I'm going to suggest to that uh, we move to allow this to be tabled till two two months second. first on the agenda. Okay. Get a second. That's not a discussable second. issue. All in favor? <coughs> Being tabled for two months of the second the first on the agenda. Okay. Okay. Second it, uh, I did. Thank you. Okay. And again, I'm sorry we didn't get. Uh, I'm just. Better. Thank you. We we like to encourage. Uh, So we're basically a quasi judicial council, and we have to follow the rules that are, that are, that are given to us by the council. Yeah. Do I have a motion for adjournment? Do you want to do the zoning board comments? I had oh, an yeah. additional comment. Oh, yeah. um, I'm, look, I'm curious. This is, you guys, I'm sorry, it hasn't, doesn't regard you guys. Um, I drive by Bailey's every day, and they still have lights on. Yeah, I, I, I can concur, too. I drove by the other so day and it was all I think up. the question I have is, Mark, you always talk about the integrity of the zoning board. Um, I'm kind of, I mean, I'm new. So to me, it's surprising to see that. This is a month after. This is two months now since our decision. We made a decision here. that didn't allow them to put daily. Uh, to use the electrical out at the outside pad. Oh, this is uh, uh, the uh, restaurant. The, the restaurant yeah. right near Old Loop Point Road. Yes, right. I live yep. down the street from it. Okay. So, um, uh, well, that's a phone news. Well, no, but we, we spoke to Brian last yep. month about it, and it was part of the decision. Yeah, yeah. I've heard discussion about that name yeah. in the office. Yeah, because I drove by, Mr. Chair, and it was fully electrical out there. All the electrical lights were on the ground, and everything was plugged in, and it was completely lit up. Okay, so I'd like to, we haven't adjourned yet. I'd like to throw something at the board real quick here. Um, I believe that the board should come out stating that if this isn't dealt with right now, the fines will begin in the county, which is what the fines are going to be, but in us enough. If you want to make a motion on that, feel free. You can be anywhere from $100 to $2,500 a day. I, I also go, live down the street. I would go to town me. Make a call. <laughs> I don't have a problem saying it. I, I and so do the owners <laughs> live down the street from me. I mean, I'll make the motion. No. I, I believe that we need to give one week's notice because we don't know if they talked to the town or not. I don't know if the town's gone there. I have no idea. Yeah. It may be a town day. But one week from now, if those lights are on, it needs to commence with a daily fine to be determined by the town manager. Yeah, I mean, I'm guess I'm trying to get a sense of us as a board. I mean, we make a decision two months ago, and we discussed it at the meeting a month ago. The board is going to try and wait us out. Mm -hmm. And well, there was also well, who's waiting us also, out though? The town or Bailey's? Yeah. Yeah. There was also an opinion sent down by the zoning board with strong comments about this. That's right. Um, so they could get disregard their, for doing what they were not supposed to be doing. But their liquor license was being held. Yes, because the zoning and board sent it down. And the zoning board sent down their opinions. They had strong remarks. Yes, they did. And Cody got a copy of that and was provided to the council, and they still got their liquor license, I believe. Or food handler's license. Maybe that's the one that was being held. So was it possible for that there, to be? One of those was being held. Both of us sent down strong comments about what was being done and the disregard for what had been. Did you write letters? I didn't. Oh, okay. No, but I mean, no, I mean both boards both, both right. Right. sent down yeah. strong remarks about our disappointment with it them. Went, it went to the town council with those remarks? I don't know the plan. The town council them. gets a cop. Toady gets a copy of whatever yeah. advisory opinions yeah. are. They sent comments down to us yeah. when we were reviewing it. Oh. And I believe it was also part of their liquor license that they It was liquor license or food handlers yeah. being held. Or so because of them starting things that they were. Because one year ago, Jay, things. they were taught to. Right. Oh, yeah. No, I'm well aware of this. Okay. So, so if they're in violation, does that mean that license gets retracted? No, but they start accumulating a fine per day as, okay. as approved by the. I'll leave it to the town manager to make that call. Yeah. But it's no less than $100. $2,500 a day. I know what I do. Um, but I, I think at this point we need to, we need to, either this board has authority or doesn't. That's kind of what I'm wondering. And so I, I think it's reasonable. What's today? Uh, today is Thursday. The third, the Wednesday, 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 July 13th. Wednesday. How long, how quick can you get somebody down there to fill in? Uh, I had a conversation with my fill gas tomorrow. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, Just as part of the reason to be in writing. Well, there's there. I, I think to try to set a date. Um, I, I think there's some legal procedures. I'm not sure what letters have been sent yet. I, I just don't, I, I haven't been close, so I, I think. They broke our the, requirement. Yeah. Their approval was not, right. it was specifically yeah. spelled out they could not do that. No electrical no, no electrical. before they left here. But I think, you know, I, I guess what I would suggest that if you want to get fines going as quickly as possible to sort of make your recommendation to fines get as quickly as legally possible. Okay, so that's great. And I would sort of leave it and then we can. Perfect. So I'll move that the fines begin as soon as, hopefully they won't. Legally possible. As soon as legally possible, if there is an immediate resolution. And any answer other than yes, sir, is unacceptable. And the fine amount to be determined by the town manager. And anywhere between $100 and $2,500 is the rule. Oh, so it's per day. Per day. Is there a second? Any thoughts on the motion? Well, I mean, they, there seems to be a pattern. I mean, what happens if they unplug for a week and then they plug back in? Their clients start again. <laughs> yeah, it's it's tough for the town to try to it's tough for the town to try to manage some of the things that we approve because there's just not enough manpower. This is this is just one of those. This is where we get into trouble with these guys being in business since 2007. It creates all these issues. It's it's the signs that down on. On 114, that well, it's a sign, it's supposed to be two by three, right? But it's got a Christmas tree on it, and lights, and well, we look at the lobster traps that we <laughs> specifically said we don't want more than five lobster yeah, traps, so and all of a sudden there's 50 lobs, lobster yeah, traps. Yeah. But, but the problem is, the town only has so many people to manage these things, and, right. and, right. and like Brian did last month, Brian brought up an issue, and not if you have a lot, if you're selling, you know, look at the work we went through to deal with that. But Brian's right, but the one they didn't have the authority to do that. And, and we worked hard to help them. But honestly, that was a relatively, if they had a history, I don't think it would have been a relatively easy issue for me. Uh, I knew they had stuff there before, so it was easier for me. This has been an ongoing problem. It's in our face. I'm to the point where I, I feel it's, it's unacceptable. So the motion is, uh, as soon as reasonably possible, they are notified, and the day after they're notified, they can, whatever, whatever the town can do, fines commence no less than $100, no more than $2,500. Per day. Per day. And if it starts up again, from now until they come back to this board, the fines will commence again without any warning. That's our motion. Discussion on the motion? Do I take a picture and read it? All in favor? Unanimous. Or if you, if you have a document, on that point, and and since we're still somewhere. being recorded, just so board members know and anyone else who might be watching this, um, we are in the process of establishing, or maybe it's already been posted on the website, a complaint form on the code webpage. It, right. is on, it, is on it is on there now because what's happened in the past is we get calls and we sort of try to deal with things, but they would get they would get lost in someone's log. So these complaint forms will go in a property file. So we'll now have a record to say, hey, you know, these lights have been an issue for years, or oh, this is the first time we've gotten this complaint. Let's go have it. We can have a pleasant conversation. So now Karen boy, just said to me, sorry, Karen just said to me, you need to call. So I mean. Do I call every day and say, Gary, nope, I would, I would, I would, fill I out a complaint? No, I think that complaint or? form, that, that's the intent of this complaint yeah. form, is to yeah. codify these things. And so when our code officers show up as well, they can hold a stack of papers and say, look, that's this what isn't. I don't. So anyway, um, we will certainly, um, I'm sure you heard it before, but we'll do it <laughs> again. Uh, so it, it's on the website, and it, we have hard copies in the office, <coughs> and it has to be filled out by because technically, aren't right. those like waiver sign, banner signs like I was talking about earlier? Those are supposed to be taken down every night and put uh, back up. Yes. Uh, and there's many are. of them right. that stay up. Right. That are in and you're, you're allowed to have one that says open and another one that like says <coughs> what you're at, what, whatever you do, but you can only have like 21 letters. Can we so send out something by email? What, what do we have for ability to get to each of each business? Maybe we can ask. Are you talking about the feather sign? In 
Wait to see what, go to our website to see what you can do. Instead of looking and knocking on your door. I think that would be a good conversation to have with Seiko. Um, Is the complaint form <coughs> also for the signs that get put up along with one for businesses that don't really have a home? Uh, you mean like people are just sort of stickling? Like yeah, seal bit. coating yeah, or painting. Yeah, the guys pick painting. those up as they go around. But yeah, that complaint form's for... They can do those for so many days. Uh, mm -hmm. No, I'm not. I'm sorry. I meant like blue. I mean the painting guys and oh. the and you know who you know. So I, you yeah, see them pop up all over Route One. Right. Yeah, the political so the, signs are different. Right, the political signs are different. Different beasts. Is the board comfortable with me working with uh, Setco to come up with a plan to get this communicated out to the town? I think that would give <laughs> the zoning administration. I think the, 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 the code enforcement will have a lot better, easier argument if. We've got a data pool. I know they've got a full database. I have a brochure for signs um, and permitting and stuff that That'd I need that sits down in the office. So by that way, we'll know who got the messages, and then they've gotten their one warning. And then, we, then if it's not dealt with, a code enforcement officer driving down the road can stop and say, you got your warning already. It doesn't meet the requirements. Down. The SEDCO chair just came back in just so she knows what we're referring to. We're basically talking about businesses that we approve things or don't approve things and we tell them that certain things are not approved and then these things appear and are done after we have specifically said not to do them or some feather signs or whatever you call them that are supposed to come in and out. We also, um, <laughs> we also just, just authorized so you know. uh, that Bailey's uh, has been violating now two months, a requirement that we put in. The lights that have been put up. And uh, we have given them notice that we expect a $100 fine, up to $2,500 fine per day. Okay, uh, my, my only concern is, is um, you know, I, I don't want to put SEDCO in an enforcement role, but in, in an information or communication role, absolutely 100%. Yeah. That's exactly We're what We're looking I'm more for information. Yeah. I want you to protect the people from me. <laughs> <laughs> now he's running for sheriff. Where's <laughs> <laughs> my badge? Constable. <laughs> well, I don't. I, I get, but it, it's not fair for any anybody to pick. The, I, I don't mind taking the hit. So, Setco is a tool yeah. for people to utilize, and the information, if you can get it out there, would yeah. be great because oh, so we're seeing a lot of things. Any uh, communication information all over that. Any, uh, any any comments from Seiko right. tonight? Good. Uh, any comments from uh, from from Ms. Piven? No, it's been a pleasure. This will be his first and last sitting. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you at the uh, parking booth tomorrow. <laughs> the bride sees this. It'll be more likely that you'll be seeing me not here. <laughs> he'll, be, he'll be directing people on where to go for the Motor Booty concert. Just so folks do know, it seems we are still recording, yes, the Chamber of Commerce, big show tomorrow night in the park, Motor Booty. It's supposed to be beautiful weather. Yep. So, Motor Booty event, awesome. If you haven't heard them. That's Great. put on by the chamber, and we'll have a parking attendant there. So, <laughs> and, and just for thank you so much for helping. Uh, awesome. And Brian, we do love you. Motion uh, to adjourn. Four goes too much. No second at all in favor. We are adjourned.